Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to The Cup, the currently unnamed podcast, where you come here first to quench your reality thirst, and where you get the tea. We put the tea in reality. We are here, and I am Lana, your resident diva, you know, here to give the tea, spill the tea, and drink the tea, because I love me some tea. So if you have some tea, you know what to do. Hit me up. Give me the tea. I need it. And I'm drinking water, although I left my cup in another location, but just know there's water in that cup, period. <laughs> and we have someone in hiding, so I'll let them introduce themselves. <laughs> Hi, my name is Anissa Salong, also known as Sam, D- Sam DMV, also known as Sam Damanta Freddy, your fellow friendly 5'4 trans non binary Filipino Canadian mentally unstable hot mess, <laughs> hailing all the way from Toronto, Ontario, Canada, Scarborough, if you want to be specific. And today we have some water with a spoon <laughs> for some reason. We stand that completely. And we now have someone else here to join us. Hi, I'm AJ. I'm a 22-year-old college graduate who plays way too much Smash Bros. And I'm excited to talk about the mole. (laughs) Period. (laughs) And that's what we're here to do. We're here to talk about the mole on Netflix, um, episode one through three. Um, Because we know all the episodes are out there. We get it, folks. We got it. But here at the Cup, we don't do things traditionally or normal and live all the time because, yeah, we have lives and we have things to do. But that don't mean we can't recap about it later. And that's what we're doing. We're recapping about the show now. So we have episodes one through three we're going to discuss today. And um, I have to say, I never watched the mole originally when it was on ABC at first here in the States. Never really watched it. Didn't know. I think I saw a little bit of celebrity mode at one point, and then I kind of was like, eh, don't get it, but move on. We move. But then my timeline was going crazy over this mole coming back on Netflix. The mole, the most great, the most so strategic. Everybody's so strategic. Everybody's so amazing. Blah, blah, blah. You got to watch, you got to watch, you got to watch. And I was like, ugh. And then Logan says, are we going to cover the mole? And I was like, I don't watch the mole. But everybody's talking about the mole. So you know what? I'm going to give it a chance. I'm going to watch the first couple episodes. And if I like it, I'll talk about it. But if I don't, yeah, no. Well, we're here. So obviously I liked it enough (laughs) to talk about it. Because, yes, everything about it, the hype. The hype was there. Like mm-hmm. it was amazing. It was it's strategic. Can't stop watching it. Very much. Um very much um into it. And they love leaving us on these cliffhangers like they love to do on the Mo. So of course I gotta always watch to see what happens next. So this is a very binge worthy show. Very binge worthy show. Absolutely a binge worthy show. So if you haven't watched the mole and you're watching this to see if you should watch it, watch it. Period. Yeah. What do you I'm, very, I'm very much copying and pasting everything that Lana said <laughs> on from not knowing much about the mole. I have no idea how much traction it got, especially in Canada. Um, and I just knew the mole was the mole existed. Um, and I knew it had something to do with social deduction. Um, and I knew that it used to go on in the in somewhere in the 2000s or so. Correct me if I'm wrong, please. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was canceled. Uh, and then I saw that it was brought back on Netflix. And I saw way too many people in our circle, in our Twitterverse, Miniverse, whatever it is called, um, talk about the talk about how good it is. And so my brother and I were like, okay, let's watch it. So we watched it. And our first sitting, we, I believe, made it to through like four, three or four episodes. And then we were like, nah, it's getting late. We have to, we have lives. <laughs> so we'll save it for next time. But yeah, no, it's giving. Um, so I watched The Mole back when it first aired, not when it first aired, 
lies. Uh, I watched the first couple seasons of The Mole on Netflix over quarantine because they got put on the platform. So it was really cool to just go back and watch old TV, especially because the original seasons came out in like 2001, 2002, somewhere in that time period. Um, and I love season one of The Mole. I like season two. I'm not a big fan as much as season one. Um, but I did not care for Celebrity Mole that much. So when it got canceled, I wasn't too surprised to hear that it had been canceled after a couple seasons. You know, it had a decent run for a reality show. Uh, and then I hear that see, that there's this reboot coming up on Netflix. And I'm cautiously optimistic. And I have to say, after watching the entire show, it didn't disappoint. Other than that finale. Um, <laughs> we'll talk about, we'll talk about, about it soon. We'll talk about it. <laughs> we'll get to it. We'll get to it. <laughs> Well then let's jump into it Since we all have our stories on why we start watching it Let's jump into it So the series starts off with Us meeting this cast Of, of misfits Or oh. people I don't know But we, 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 we met them all As they're dropped into A jungle Deep into yeah. the jungle And they're told to go find this abandoned plane And I don't know about y'all, but me walking through some uh, a jungle by myself, not recommended for me. Not something I look forward to. Not something I would say sign up to do. <laughs> like you gonna drop me off in this jungle and tell me to here go find this plane in the middle of the jungle and buy and leave me there? No, no, absolutely not. But that's what they did, and they sent them. So let, we're going to go through this cast. Let's meet the cast because this is what they, how we met them, dropping them off. So Avery is first. Well, I don't know. Not the order of who came in. This is just the order I see it on my in my notes that I have them. But we have Avery, who's a professional gamer. Um, what y'all think about Avery? What are we thinking I, about Avery? I love Avery. I Avery love Avery. So great. Um, yeah. So just spoilers for the first three episodes here before we get into anything deep she does make it through these first three episodes so yes. uh later like as the season goes on you really get to know avery more as a person as a character she's so much fun to watch uh super strategic too which that's something you're gonna we're gonna see is like a common theme for this cast for a lot of these people avery is playing the game though like the mm -hmm. entire time she's not mm -hmm. off for a second Mm -mm. Okay. Yeah. Um. I also wanted to butt in, but luckily I'm not butting in anymore. So, <laughs> um. So I'm. I wouldn't say. I don't know how people like feel about like, cause I know she's a Twitch streamer, and so between that and like professional gamer, she, I feel like those are two very different things, but like. Nonetheless, I love Avery. I feel I, like I feel like everyone is super strategic in their own ways, but Avery is the one that really stands out. Mm -hmm. Not you. only because of the edit, spoiler alert, um, but also because I feel like the gaming mind that she has is very much like playing into her advantage and into effect in kind of the trajectory of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Being a professional gamer is someone you always are playing these scenarios out in your head. You're always playing games in your head. And this is just a live game that she gets to play out. She gets to go and think, sees all these scenarios. And how would she, with, in front of her, with her controller, you know, get her way through a jungle and find this plane and get this, you know, like, she just has this strategic mindset already. So I feel like that's just going to be more of an advantage. Even in, even with this game, it's like, it's still about a little bit of trickery. You have to trick people. You have to make people believe things that's maybe not true in order for them to not get it right. Like, you know, things that about yourself, but people don't, other people don't know. So if you could just fake, make people believe you're the mole, they can keep guessing you and they can keep guessing you and they can keep guessing you and they can all go home and you're still there. Cause you know, it's not you, but it's just dwindling down to who it is. It's like, who's left? I see you. I see you doing some, as they like to say, we said, I heard this a lot throughout the season, mold activities. Like, um, there, it's just like, 
I enjoyed her strategic mind and yeah, in future episodes that we're going to talk about today, but I'm sure in future episodes after that, we're going to see how strategic Avery actually is. And I'm going to enjoy watching that because just from what I've seen so far, I like Avery. I really do. I like her. And I will say postseason, Avery is becoming one of my favorites postseason because mm -hmm, the girl is funny on Twitter. She's amazing on Twitter. She <laughs> she is. She has you a also spilling the tea too. If you yeah, if she you spills in, faces a couple times. She's spilling she's a lot of tea. And that is why I'm wanting to hurry up and get through this season so I can finish everything and then go back and watch all her tea that she's spilling because I feel like I feel like she is just. I don't want to get the tea and not really know what she's talking about. So I want to watch yes. the episodes, know everything, and then go back and watch all this postseason madness because this seems like this postseason, these are messy people. Not only are they strategic, but they're messy, and I love it. I mean, she's short. And, and she got a hot bay, and she don't mind putting them out on, 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 on Twitter for us to look at. So thank you, Avery. I ain't mad at you. You got this, sis. Period. Um, so then we go from Avery to Casey. Casey is a 39 year old COVID ICU nurse from Chino, California. Um, not one of my favorites. She's very I, middle of the road for me. I don't know how I feel about her, but okay. As, okay, so again, I'm trying not to spoil everything because I have one. Yes, please don't spoil anything yeah. besides uh, three. Yeah, because okay, Casey gets like she's i think one of if not the first person you meet on the episode like as they're walking in and mm -hmm. then these the rest of the first three episodes you barely see her at all and it was kind of jarring for me because usually whoever they show big at the beginning is someone they're going to be highlighting throughout the first like the next little bit at least and she didn't really get that um again spoiler she does make it past these first three episodes uh and you get more of her later on throughout the next little bit uh, at minimum. Um, and I really appreciate what she has done before she came on the show because she was an ICU nurse during COVID and that's nuts. But um, yeah, she's, she's fun. I don't have like a, any issues with her, but I also don't have anything that's like big, like love of anything about her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm very much, I feel very much the same way that you both do as well, where, you know, she's, she's perfectly solid, she's very middle of the road. Um, again, we don't, other than the fact that she is a COVID nurse, like an ICU nurse, and I have the utmost respect for people that do put their line, put their lives on the line to save, to help other people who are at risk, especially in a time like this. Um, so yeah, just flowers to that. Um, but just overall, like as a character, we didn't we didn't really get much, but you know, um it took it took a bit. It took a bit. We'll talk about it, we'll talk about it in a future episode, but it took a bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So uh next is Dom. He is 29 years old, uh heavy machine operator from Toronto, Ontario. Um I like Dom, and um, it's a lot of interesting thoughts about Dom. I, I I did find him very genuine in who that he wanted to really play this game for the reasons he was playing the game. Was he a little bit um annoying when it came to his need or want for a bromance? Oh, for sure. Like, I could not. First, it was one guy, then that guy didn't make it. So then it was another guy. And I'm just like, oh my God, bro. Why do you have to have a bromance? Like, just vibe and play the vibe. game. Right. Just vibe, <laughs> my guy. Like, mm. you do not need to have a bromance. But I mean, he's very nice to look at. I will put that out there. Dom is a very mm -hmm. good looking man. And I was like, oh, okay. I see you, but the whole Dom Cruise thing that he would just blurt out on a regular mm -hmm. basis, I can see it was very much annoying. I was like, bruh, 
We were talking about it before we started filming. Yes. It got on my nerves so much because every time this man went to go do anything, he would just say something. I'm going to be Tom Cruise. And I'm like, dude, shut up. You're trying to make it a catchphrase. It's not gonna happen. It's not yeah. fetch is not going to happen. Let stop, it go. Stop trying to make stop trying to make happen. fetch happen. It's not, happen. it's not gonna happen. Like stop it. Like yeah. it was it okay. So not that I'm bi. Okay, so I'm gonna try and get my bias from Toronto people out of the way. Because I do love the fact that Dom is from Toronto. Um, it actually kind of does explain a lot though. <laughs> Given the Torontonian stereotypes, uh, he does give major Toronto energy. Um, so does he? He does. What he, is Toronto energy? Could you define? It's. I I really don't know how to explain it. As a non-Canadian, this is very confusing, but I'm here for it. Right. <laughs> no, specifically like Toronto energy. Mm-hmm. Okay. But anyways, um, yeah. So the whole like Dom Cruise bit. It was fine for like the first, like when he first did it, but when he kept on repeating that, it it did get a bit annoying. But otherwise, like as a, otherwise like as a player and as a character, like I I truly do believe like he was that he is genuine, mm-hmm. with like whatever. Yes, I highly agree. <laughs> yep. All right. Uh, after Dom, I have Greg. Yes, Greg is next. All right, uh, Greg, Greg, go ahead. Greg is a 32-year-old marketing consultant from Seattle, Washington. Uh, But later on, we learned that he he has experience with a lot of other things. We'll talk about it. But (laughs) (laughs) Greg is Um, so much fun. I love Greg. (laughs) I know that is not a common opinion on this particular recap group at the moment, but um, actually it is, because uh, Anissa agrees, but... I, I do. <laughs> like, okay, so I was like, what the heck is Greg about? But then I realized, but then as kind of the, these first few episodes go on, I was like, oh, he's very intriguing. Very intriguing. Also because I do find him cute. But like, anyways... Mood. Uh-huh. Um... Uh- <laughs> yeah I, I mean okay i'm gonna be honest greg is not one of my favorites so far so far um like i say i am only four episodes in he could grow on me i i always leave it open for people to grow on me but and i also think i see i i, I feel like the edit is going to make is making me feel the way I feel about him right now. But I also feel like the edit could change and I might be able to tolerate him more later because I see a little shift in the edit in the fourth episode that I was like, okay, I think he feels like he's been exposed a little bit. So he has to calm down a little bit. I don't know. But as of right now, I do not care for him. I do like his strategic, uh, mine though i do like how he plays the game i just his personality just doesn't mesh or gel with mine like i just don't enjoy watching some of the things or i don't know i don't know what it is i don't know what it is i okay okay so hear me out hear me out when it comes to How do I say this without sounding like a mean person? But, okay. So, I've come across, and I love a lot of my um, white gays. My white gays. Exactly. Love my (laughs) white gays. Love some of them. But some of them can come off a little much for me because it feels like they're trying to emulate a character a caricature of me and I'm like mm. Mm, as a person as a woman who is a black woman who I feel like a lot of gays like to snatch up a lot of our you know things which is fine I, I look flattery is the next you know that means you love us and you you want to be us and I mean that's a form of flattery love it but 
It just seems a little more. And I feel like Greg is giving me that vibe of a little much. That's he's. It's just, I don't know. I don't know. But like I say, I feel like he's going to switch it up. I feel like the shift was happening from the fourth episode that I watched. So I'm yeah. intrigued to watch the next few episodes to see if my process, my thought process is correct. And I am not, oh, I'm not going to close anyone off. Just from the first three episodes, Greg was a little much. He was a little much for me. And I was like, I don't know how much I can take of this Greg, but we'll see. But Greg also is the name of someone who I just highly respect and love and adore. So I'm open to loving a, another Greg in my life. So we'll see. We'll see. Uh, yeah, but I'm open for Greg. Next is Jacob. Jacob is 29 years old from Bloomville, Ohio, and is a firefighter, paramedic, lieutenant. <sighs> I have mixed feelings. <laughs> I do. I he have. Do. Yes, me too. Okay, first off, he is very nice to look at. I'm not even going to lie about that. Man's attractive and he knows it. Okay. But the thing about Jacob as a person on the show if I'm wrong, I don't, I don't think I am. The first three episodes, he has a pretty much invisible edit for the entire first three episodes, which, again, he makes it through these first three episodes, but and that does change, like, dramatically. I mean, they kind of have to if you make it that far, but he is just so boring. <laughs> no, thank you! So boring. Yeah, thank you! Oh my god! <laughs> that is what I was going to say. That was what yeah. I was thinking. I'm like, oh my god, this man is so boring, so vanilla, yeah. so yeah. blah, blah, blah. Hey, oh, We are not going to insult vanilla here. Okay? Oh this my god, is he worse. is uh, vanilla. Look, vanilla is a a yeah. You're right. He is very no, much because at least vanilla is a flavor. Uh, he <laughs> is just so unseasoned. Oh my god. god. Yeah. yeah. He is a piece of dry chicken. Dry, <laughs> no man. salt, no pepper, no seasons, nope. no Lowry's, no, no. He is the blandest <laughs> thing I have ever seen on my television screen. I was like, casting, what are we doing with you in this bland man? But maybe I guess we didn't need to have too much seasoning into the episode, into the, the group because too much is could be too much. He is just, he takes away a lot of seasoning from these people. He is so bland. Oh, yeah. Um. Okay. So, like, I feel like throughout these like first like few episodes, we barely got anything out of, out of him, except for the fact that he's a firefighter and he has never left America. Never. Yes. Oh yeah, never. we didn't even mention this. Uh, this entire season of the Mole takes place in Australia. By the yes. way. Yeah, so, yes. Uh, by the way. So, I wonder why that's relevant. That there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, should have said that off the top, but yeah, <laughs> he um he never met, left America, and he lets us know that every time in most episode, every, most of the interviews that he says <laughs> that he's never left America, and I'm like, ah, we get it, understood. A lot of us, a lot of people have never left where they're from before. We get it. So um. You don't have to mention it anymore, but he mentions it several, several, several times. But he's just, I think he's going to do, like he said, he made it through these these three episodes. So, sure. But I feel like he still has that boring man. That, like, I think he's just boring. I just, I just was bored from him. But like you say, he made it through these first these first three episodes, so maybe he'll, you know, he'll change, and we'll get more from him later on. Those who know know. I I am one of those who don't know, so I'll find out later. Moving on. <laughs> one of mom, my favorite mom people, is next. To my favorite people so far on the show, mother herself. Period. Bottom line. Don't care what nobody say. I don't know how people feel about her. And you know what? I don't care. This is mother. This is queen. This is everything. This is joy, everybody. I love oh, joy. 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 Schweitzer. joy is 40 years old. Commercial airline pilot from Atlanta, Georgia. Well, no, she's a pilot. Not at all. They don't mention it every episode. Oh, no, they don't say this <laughs> is a pilot. <laughs> they, they don't talk about that enough. Like, but, but yeah, the majority of Joy is the one talking about it. It's she's, everyone else. 
brings it up all the time. Like, you think? I, I, I kind of heard somewhere that she might be a pilot, but I don't know. Couldn't be sure. <laughs> right. Uh, but yeah, Joy, uh, I love this woman. I love everything about this woman. This woman it's is beautiful. beautiful, number one. She's first a handful of black pilots, women pilots in this Less country. than 1%. Less than 1%. Let's put that out there. So the fact that she is one of the few women pilots in this country, who knows who you sis? She is 40 years old. She is in my age bracket. So I love seeing that. I love seeing somebody represented on there who is like, could be me if I was smarter and more beautiful like her. Yes, that could be me. I love everything about this woman. And even the fact that people are like, once we get into the episode, everybody will talk, we'll, we'll tell y'all more why people are talking about why she's a pilot and they don't understand why she's a pilot. How can she be a pilot? Directions. Oh my God. <sighs> she can't, yeah, just she crazy. Direction. She can't do anything. She's a pilot and how could she not? They got autopilot. She doesn't have to learn rap. She just knows, you know, just, Go. She, she, <laughs> okay. Uh, they just tell me what. Okay. But well, anyway. But yeah, Joy is everything. I love from these first three episodes, y'all. I fell in love with this woman. And even when folks was like, I can't believe she did this, or I can't believe she did that, I'm like, I don't care. I just like watching her on my screen. She's just so confident and just like, she could be very wrong in her reads, but she is going to make you believe she is absolutely 100% yes. right in every read she gives you. It's just like, I want that confidence. I want to be wrong, but you don't know because I'm going to make you think I'm right. <laughs> I, I cannot wait till we get to talk about the big moment from episode three that mm -hmm. she's involved in. Well, I can't wait to talk yes. about it. We'll talk. We'll talk. We'll talk. We'll talk. Uh, but yeah. Joy oh, is so fantastic. She's so good. She is probably out of this entire cast, I would say she makes the best TV this season. Absolutely. Uh, and that's on the whole. That's not even just these three episodes. These three episodes, it's unquestionable that she makes the best TV in these three episodes. Mm -hmm. But like the entire season, because again, spoiler alert, she does make it out of these three episodes. Uh, she is so fun. I love her so much. Yes. Yeah. I'm I don't feel like I need to say more because y for, for one thing, y'all have said everything that I want to say. Like she's entertaining. She is smart. She could be wrong, but she'll make you believe that you're, that she's right. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. It, it's, oh, and not, not to mention that she is also like a pilot in, in case that it, just in case that was in case you missed it, you know, <laughs> yeah, you won't because they don't really talk about it much in the episodes. So you, you yeah, you might, you might miss that little fun fact about my so. yes. So but I, I love Joy so much. I do too. She is literally my favorite on this season. I don't care. Already, she is just my favorite. I love her. I love her. But okay, we'll we'll, we'll try to keep moving because we we I don't want to take up too much time. We're taking up a lot of time, but it's okay. We move on to Kessie, who is twenty seven. I think it's pronounced uh, Kasi. Kasi. I, I hear everyone saying Kasi. Yes. Kasi. Kessie. Kasi. Gorgeous. That's what I'll say. You Let's just call her gorgeous. Let's just call her gorgeous. But she's that. also smart, too. She, okay. she is smart. You find out later she went to Columbia. Yes. Uh, very intelligent. She's uh, 27. She's from New York. Uh, she lives in New York, I think, yeah. or something like that. She's um, from New York, yeah. And she's yeah. a software developer. Which, a software like, engineer, I believe. Yeah. She's just so smart. So smart. And you see it in these first three episodes. You don't see a ton of her. But when you do see her, you see her in these like very small areas providing light amounts of support to make sure like she's getting her job done properly. And it's Absolutely. great. And she's so good at what she does. Yeah, no. It just... Kasi's way of thinking is so intriguing because I don't know it's just again we don't we don't get much from her but what we do get of her is so is she's smart she's just wildly smart mm -hmm. again software engineer and it's just 
I love that she is so like under the radar. Like mm-hmm. everyone loves her as well. And I think we kind of get to see that. Um, moving on. All right. So we'll keep moving. Uh, I'm probably gonna butcher this one, this name too, but oh. is it Ose now? Yes, Ose. Ose. <laughs> Thank you. Ose is next. He is 32 years old, and he works as a real estate agent from Brook and in Brook, uh, a real estate agent in Brooklyn, New York. Period. Not much to say about Ose. I mean, we don't really have much to go off of when it comes to Ose, do we? Ose was there. Okay, so let's jump in a little bit into the episode while we're talking about Ose because. Spoiler word. Also, don't make it out the first episode, y'all. I'm just going to put that out there. He was yeah. very entertaining. He, he was, was very entertaining. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he was entertaining, but he don't make it out. So we just going to put that out there now. Also, I didn't make it. Yeah. But we'll talk about why he didn't make it. Um, I just feel like Osei was doing a little, some, some things that would have sketched me out if I was out there, too. Like, things he did or said, I was kind of like... That's very mole activity. That's very mole like behavior. I will give Ose this one thing. I do feel bad for him because I feel like he just got played really hard, really early. Um, a lot of people, they mentioned it a couple of times in the episode, but most of the people were trying to spread their answers as thin as possible for the first quiz because they figured somebody would just go in all in on one person. And from what we found out post-show, Osei just went it all in on one person and he got it wrong. And that's why he was the first person out. Yep. And also he had to wander the jungle being given directions by Joy for an hour and a half. Yeah. That's no easy thing to have. That's no easy thing. That. Because she's a pilot. She should know how to do directions, right? Yeah, she right? <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so, yeah. Yeah, that was kind of weird. It was interesting, but I, I I will say, since we're talking about the episode, if I was in that group with Joy, and I would have been very skeptical of her as well, because you left us for you, you know, you 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 are a pilot. This navigation is what you're supposed to do. You do should know how to read a map, but like you said, in this technology age, they have autopilot. They have things. You don't really have to know exactly where you're going to know you're getting to the right place and when you're in the air. So, I don't know. But I would have been suspicious of Joy as well. And he just, I think he just went all in on Joy. I believe that's who he went all in on. And that wasn't right. So, mm-hmm. we'll neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> right. We won't confirm. But let's move on. Next is Pranav. And he is 29 years old and from a law firm associate from Boston, Massachusetts. I, you know what? He's I smart. like him. I really I like, him. like him. I really, He's nice really, to look at too. He really, is, yes, he is very good looking. That too, very good looking man. But In terms really of like like pure intelligence, he is probably the most intelligent person on the cast. Like in like raw smarts. I don't know about common sense, but like book smarts, this man has all. Oh, of it. he has it. Yes. And also his post show stuff. He's he was in a uh, space with Dom and Avery the other day, and the three of them were just going back and forth about all of the stuff that they never mentioned on the show that had happened, and it was just very entertaining. He's a very funny person too. He is. No, Dom, but... you're, you're, you're mute by the way. Oh no, I thought Sam was going to talk. Oh, Anissa, I thought Anissa was going to say something. I mean, I, I found Pranav pretty entertaining, very intriguing as well. Um. Yeah, no, Pr- Pranav gave for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was everything. I wasn't mad at him. So next we have Samara. She's 25 years old from Atlanta, Georgia, and she's a mental health counselor. Um, I want to also say gorgeous. 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 Like this cast eight, it was some beautiful people on this cast. I know you're gonna lie. Um, you guys, you guys see this dry erase marker? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You, see, you see what color it is? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a perfect description of Samara. Purple. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't get anything. Okay, in her 
entire time on the show, I she got eliminated in this first three episodes. Spoilers. She was literally she got I think two or three confessionals the entire time. And one time of one of what was like she's a psychiatrist or psycho psych person, so she's gonna be able to read people really well. And that was about it. Like I could not tell you a single other thing this girl did this entire time she was here. And I feel really bad because she was really interesting. Like her, yeah. Like the things that she was doing in the missions we saw her do, especially the um the red button mission with the uh, periodic table. Yeah, like that was really cool. But we didn't get anything other than that. And so by the time she was gone, it just was like, oh well, okay, well, that sucks. Yeah, I I. I was super intrigued by Samara because I, I'm I'm trying not to spoil so much. Um, mm -hmm. It's hard, but yeah, no, <laughs> it, it's super hard when you've watched when you've already watched the whole season. Um, but as a character, I found I found Samara super interesting because I I kind of put her in that similar box as like as as Kasi. Yeah, that's fair. Very fair. Yeah, it was. She did. I was. I was excited when I saw her, and I was wanting to see more of her. But you know, things don't always work out the way you seem, or the way you want them to work out. So, right, it is what it is. So the next person is uh, Sandy. She is twenty six years old, um, an applied behavior analyst therapist. From four four Texas. Yep, I agree, AJ. Yep. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, Very much. Don't, don't her, don't I, I felt yeah, I felt like Sandy was the most invisible person this entire season too. Like, the, like these three episodes especially, she mm -hmm. literally she gets she didn't get anything the first three episodes, and then we're gonna talk about the beginning of the fourth episode for like a minute, right? At the end, is that what we said? Okay, no, no, we're not. Okay, never mind. I'll, I'll keep that to myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i did not i forgot she was on the cast sometimes and when that happens and you're past like the first or second boot purple <laughs> like bad purple yeah i just i just knew from the spoiler alert actually screw it i'm, I'm gonna say it spoiler alert like i just know she's not winning that's it. All right. I mean, you can tell, though. Like, there's a certain amount of screen time someone has to have if they're going to win. Like, even Erica on Survivor 41. Like, her tribe legit did not go to tribal for five episodes. They still found a way to give her, like, tiny amounts of screen time as much as they could. That would make sense to not, like, just give it away. But, like, she did... I cannot tell you a single thing she did in these first three episodes outside of the red button. Uh, I just know, I just remember it, I guess, spoiler alert as well, that Sandy was in the group with Joy and Ose. I forgot she was even in that group. Like, yeah. I'll and be real. I believe Kasi was part of No, Kasi was no, not part of it. It wasn't Kasi. Kasi was not, it was, it was um, uh, Samara. It was Samara. Uh, Samara. Samara Joy. So uh, I guess and Sandy, purple. yeah, <laughs> purple, 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 like and joy, <laughs> just joy, right? It's just like okay, but well, the last person is Will, twenty nine years old, lifestyle brand manager from Henderson, Nevada. Um, I can't stand this man. <laughs> I am sorry, okay? This guy talks about all the time how he's putting all this money into the pot, how he's the only person working to get things done. And, like, okay, granted, you did accomplish the secret mission with the briefcase on the plane in the first episode. I will give you that. But, like, what did you do in the prison break mission that literally eight other people did not do? What did you do in the red button mission you didn't do anything in that mission you lost you didn't get get that money what what happened there where did you get the money from that was there any no because you didn't get the freaking money not to mention the entirety of the treasure mission this man tries to do things but he constantly hurts himself right to the point where he literally gets taken out of the water by medical he did not contribute to that plot at all the only person that earned money in the episode was casey so yeah this man is an egotistical 
Ugh, God, he gets on my fucking nerves. I'm sorry for ranting. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I want I I want to I want to like I wanted to like him like so badly, but again, he he's so all about I I I and doesn't really like consider to me it's a lot of it's a lot of like egotistical narcissistic kind of stuff mm -hmm. where he where he is like you know saying like oh i'm the alpha male yeah that's very fair yeah i mean i have a i have a back and forth issue with will like in one minute one minute i want to like him because like he's not one of the blandest white men i've ever seen in my life and he has some kind of entertainment value to him because i've seen some people in his position his stature his life you know his his being it's kind of like oh gross boring but then on the other hand I, the other side of me does not want to like this man because I feel like he's so full of himself sometimes. And like, like you said, what, what are you doing that is different from anybody else that you're doing? You're like the missions that I've seen him accomplish or do, like he wasn't like the best at them at all in any of them, except maybe the first one. And I don't even, he really didn't do anything but hoist up Avery and Cassie. Cassie. Like he really didn't do anything. And, and even then, he didn't even yeah. do that alone. He had Dom to help him, too. That's what exactly. I'm saying. Like, yeah. do anything. So, okay. So, it's like, we 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 know he contributes, but he knows that, too, and he believes he's the only person to contribute. Right. Like, we'll talk about the second of, or third episode, but we'll go on. But, yeah, right now, first episode, he really don't do anything. He just happens to be in a situation and then okay yes he did do the secret mission and it doubled the money for the pot great but is that supposed to carry you throughout the rest of the game i don't think so like just because you accomplished one secret mission don't mean i have to just keep you around forever and ever and ever or you like i just no so i have mixed feelings i still think he's a handsome man but i just yes. don't think I want to keep. I don't want to see him on that many episodes. He does make it through the first three episodes, so there's that. Um, I don't know what. I, I refuse to find out what the out, whole outcome is. I've stayed away. Tried to. I muted the on uh, the finale on my timeline, so I don't see all the stuff. I know who, whatever, but I don't, I don't see everything. Um, I just don't know. I don't know how. Like I said, mixed feelings about Will. Whatever. So, first episode, they'll break up into teams. We talk about the teams a little bit. We do have Will and Dom, Kasi, and Avery on one team. Then we have Joy, Ose, Sandy, and Samara on the other team. And then we have Greg and Jacob and Casey and Pranav on the water team. This water team, the, the air team, and then it's the underground. Underground, so yeah, yeah, yeah okay. high, down low, and H2O, yeah, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. High down low, Dom. That was according to Dom, that is what he said. High down low, with H2O. It, worked. It, it worked. worked, it worked, it worked, it did work. Um, so they, you know, they did that thing. And the uh, water team, first of all, they get to the water fairly quickly, I would say, make it to the water, but now they have to search the water for this briefcase. And they're all trying to figure out what's the best way to do this because it's a lot of water, a lot of, you know, space to search. How do we search and find this, this briefcase? This is where I was like, Greg, I don't even know about you. I don't even know how to feel about you in this moment because Greg was doing a lot. And, like, Greg is, like, someone – he is also someone I felt like who is – there in a situation, but never there to help the situation. You know what I mean? Like he get, he's giving me what I thought of Will. Like, but at least Greg did find the space and where the briefcase was. Will really didn't do anything else but hoist people up. But they were trying to figure out if they should. It was a clue that they were given in their backpack, in their, in their bag, their duffel. And the bag said, the clue was, if you open this clue, you have to use 25 or 2,000 or 2,500. So, 
all of the uh, briefcases were worth five thousand oh, yeah, dollars. Yes. And then if they opened the clue, they would get a clue to where to find her, something to do with the briefcase. But how to open it? Money. How yeah, to help? Yeah. Money. yeah. Yeah. And so they had to reduce some of the money. So they were trying to decide if they want to use this clue or not. At first, they were like, "Nah, let's not. We don't think so. We can find it. We can do it." Then it started losing time, and everybody started getting a little panicky. Like, we don't know where this thing is. We don't know if this thing is going to, you know, how to. So they decide that they're going to open it, use the clue, take half the money, and use the clue. They find it. They open it. They race back to the boat, to the train. Yay, for the water crew. $2,500, baby. I mean, that's. I think it was a $2,500 investment. I I fear I would have opened the clue, too, my, if I didn't, you know. Well, I mean, you really think about it, though. If they wouldn't have opened that clue because they thought their clue was going to be like where to search for the crate because they couldn't find the crate the briefcase was in. Uh, and they open it. It's like, this is how you open the crate. Do you all honestly think they would have been able to open that crate if they didn't open the clue? Because I don't. Like, the way that, like, drawer was just hidden in the crate. Like, I think it was a good decision. I, yeah. You know what? I'll agree with that, too. But also, like, I... Back on Greg, I I didn't like how it was like how he was like oh I wanted to be the one to find the to find the the case or the crate and I wanted to be the one that tells everyone like oh I found it. I mean I kind of get it though. I get it. I, I get, get it. it. But I'm like <laughs> okay. Do you well like this first challenge especially? You don't want people to be like super sus of you of the first challenge. So if you miss that, like, I get the idea of being one of being the one that's like, yeah, I found the money. I got the money. That way everybody trusts you because, you know, like a couple of the, the other group, especially the um, up high group, they all had to work together to get that money. One person could have found the money in the river and it would not have been, I mean, it would have been difficult, but it wouldn't have been like hard. But Greg being the one to find the crate and getting the briefcase, I feel like took a little bit of suspicion off of him, which is kind of what he wanted. Maybe, I don't know. I guess. I, I agree. I think like you definitely want to be strategic and I mean, I, I don't know. You don't. You want to be the one first to find the money and be that like, hey, look what I did. Found the money. Trust me. Blah blah blah. But you don't want to seem sus about doing it. Like I don't know. It mm -hmm. it was. I think we're. It was kind of a. It wasn't. I don't know. I don't know what it was about Greg. I just didn't. It seemed a little suspicious. He seemed a little suspicious, but you know, we'll see how that works out later. Um, the up high team they find their clue pretty quickly as well, and they realize that they have to go and search. It's up in the trees. Their cargo thing is up in the trees, and they, they got all the pulley equipment. They open their bag, they see all their pulley equipment, and Avery is like, Hey, I climb mountains, I know how this machine works. I know how this pulley system works. Let's do this. So they put all the harnesses on and they put on their the things and they pull the ropes. Avery goes up. Avery's trying to get, doing the swinging momentum to get to the cargo net. She's swinging. She's swinging. Finally grabs onto it, pulls herself over, and tries to start getting the nets, uh, the knots. She has some problems. She has some issues. She can't get the knots done by herself. It's a lot of knots. So she's like, I can't do it by myself. And she's like, I'm working. I'm working. And then I love you too. So, and then, yes. And then Posse is like, hoist me up, y'all. I got this. I'm going to help out with these knots. So Greg and Will hoist up Posse. And she's up, and she's and her and Avery are going at these knots like crazy. Finally, boom, the net comes down. They got it. They don't need to use the clue. Five thousand dollars in the bank for them. Locked. Done. Mm -hmm. Yep. And they head on back to the plane. You would think they'll probably be the first ones back, but they weren't because the water crew gets back there first, and then the up high crew comes in later. And then we go to the underground. Oh, oh the best group. Actually, do you mind if do you mind, do you mind if I couldn't? Please show me. the underground. So we get our first few like accusations on who the mole is mm -hmm. within these groups. Uh huh. So 
with H2O, we get Greg. Yes. For doing the, obviously for being, yeah, what he was sketch. in that first episode. Mm -hmm. Um, little and extra. Then we get Avery mm -hmm. that, from Dom because she couldn't get the knots done. Right. Right. I and you know it, it's very much like uh, so many people are going to always 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 have a reason why this person is the mo and i think accusations in any game we play we're looking for we're looking for something we're looking mm -hmm. for a reason give me a reason to vote you out give me a reason to not trust you what give, was the reason the reason you couldn't untie some knots what you mean you can't untie some knots everybody know how to untie was it a strong reason? No, because everybody just can't untie knots. But it was a reason. And that's what he went off of. His So, yeah, we got Greg and Avery. First two accusations about being the mole because of what they did, how they were acting in a challenge. Then we go to the underground group. And accusations are flying wild in this group, baby. I'm talking about accusations upon accusations. Who's the mole? You and you and you. But the biggest one is joy joy gets the accusation because joy is a pilot by the way if y'all did not know yeah this. yeah we haven't we haven't we haven't mentioned, haven't mentioned that I, we not at all not at all but joy's a pilot and joy had the map joy had the map she was going to take over the lead and she's going to um lead everyone to the scene. lead everybody to the promised land y'all we're going to find this underground mm -hmm. um didn't really work out like they that. They didn't ever make it to the promised land, y'all. They, they didn't. They, 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 the they, they went left, and the promised land was right in front of them, and they went and they swerved off to swerve. And so they were literally walking around in circles for about an hour and a half, it seemed like, because mm -hmm. they literally timed out. They just never found the promised land. Like, nothing. They didn't even... But the suspicious thing also was they never found anything, but they never even opened their bag to, get to even clue. know that there was a clue. Mm -hmm. And if they would have opened the bag, they would have known. I think they would have thought they had to shovel something. And where they are, there's no shovel. Like They were in the middle of nothing, like in the jungle. Yeah, like, but I feel like, okay, I it depends on what the clue is, though, because it's like, it's a bit of a risk because... For all we know, the clue could be about, like, oh, how do you get the crate when you're there? Mm -hmm. Not exactly, like, oh, how do how can we get to the sinkholes? Well, okay, all of the clues were about obtaining the crate once you arrived where the crate was at. Exactly. Um, all three of them were, we found out. And because the clue for the up high group was about the pulley system and how to use it properly. Uh, and that, you know, that makes sense, especially because... Let's say Avery wasn't put in that group. That probably would have been more difficult for people to figure out. The water group is about how to open that little hidden shelf in the crate to get the briefcase. Uh, and we find out that the down low group's clue was that was which of the, I think there's three sinkholes that the briefcase was buried in. Thing is, they never got to the sinkholes. So all that would have done was say, hey, we're at least looking for a sinkhole. Um, but the suspicious thing about that was Osei was the one carrying the bag. And Osei never opened the bag. It wasn't even like in the rules you have to wait till you get where you're going to open the bag. He could have opened it at any time. He just didn't. And that was why Osei also was a part of the accusation police. Like, who don't open the bag when they supposed when they on this thing, on this journey? Why didn't you open the bag, Osei? Right. Why didn't you open the bag, sir? <laughs> so yeah, he got thrown some accusations his way because folks were like, that's very mold like behavior of you, Osei, that you don't open the bag at all. Like this whole time you walking around with this bag on your shoulder and you don't even think to open it and look in it and see what's in it. So interesting. So yeah, they come back to the plane with nothing. They got nothing because they never even found the place. Everybody's like very confused, uh, very like wondering what happened. And they wanted him, they wanted, oh, said, somebody asked, oh, said to open the bag, like open it right now see, so we can see, we, at least see what it is. And Osei says, no. No. <laughs> no. Nope. I'm not I, doing it. Okay. And they're like, like we mentioned, this man is not the mole, right? No. Like we know for a fact, he got eliminated <laughs> first, okay? Why would you not open the bag? Do you just not want to look dumb? Like, like he's like, no, don't want to open the bag. No. Don't want to open it. 
I'm not going to open it. And they're like, why not? I just don't know. I don't see a point of that. So I'm not going to do it. I was like, um, do you know this is a game, sir? This is I like, mean, this okay. is just... from Ose's perspective, though, right? And this is my logic because I've played in um, a mole org before and I was not the mole. I was just a contestant and I made it pretty far. Because my whole goal as a contestant was, especially when I'm not playing for money, like it was just an org, right? My whole goal is the amount of money in this pot does not matter unless I make it to the end to win the game, right? So for me, I'm going to throw as much suspicion on myself as possible the entire time. I don't like nuance, whatever. It doesn't really matter as much because like, let's say you're somebody like, I'm trying to think of a good example. Let's say you're like, Samara, right? Who got she's out second. Um, she well, yeah. we're, we're gonna talk about this thing anyway, you know, just you, but um, it's so to put true, some, uh, but you know, Samara's out second, you know, she's that um, she, if she had thrown more sus on herself, maybe people would have leaned her way at some point because from what we've been able to find out, nobody even suspected her at all. And nope. since nobody suspected her and she had suspicions on a lot of people. She just lost the entire show. And yeah. it's unfortunate for both yeah. of them. Yeah, it was interesting. But he wouldn't open the bag. So everybody's like, okay, cool. You don't want to open the bag. Whatever. They have to go to bed. They go to sleep outside in this jungle with um their coats. Their coats or whatever and have to sleep out and they said watch. Watch the uh plane or watch the cargo in the plane. Uh, yeah, the cargoes. The cargo in this plane or whatever. They are supposed to do that, but they go to sleep. Everybody goes to bed. Everybody's not thrilled about sleeping outside, but it is what it is. It's the game. <laughs> they go to sleep. They wake up and they're like, "All right, let's get ready to go. Grab our stuff. Let's head out." And uh, I think it was. The river briefcase. Yeah, Greg. Greg realizes it's gone. Oh, no, Dom. Dom realizes that it's gone. He's like, "Yo, the briefcase. One of them is gone. What happened?" So everybody's freaking out. Like, what? What? Who did it? And everybody's like, "That's very bold activity happening right now. Everybody's suspicious of everybody. Whoa! Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! Whoa! 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 Freaking out because the cargo is missing, mm-hmm. and it's not just anyone. Not the two thousand five hundred bag, but it's the five thousand bag. And that's like our biggest cargo is missing, and now we are down five thousand dollars in the pot." <sighs> And, yeah, because they had to have the briefcase in the morning when they met up mm-hmm. with Alex the next day. Mm-hmm. And if they didn't have the briefcase, it, did, it counted like they never got it. To they never got it. And so they're, just... yeah, they're freaking out. And they're mm-hmm. upset. They're like, whoever did this horrible, we are so annoyed because now we've lost $5,000 in our pot. Whatever. So they make their way on to the next part of the game where they're going to be Alex, the host. And they move, go into this fabulous house, by the way. Can I just gorgeous say Airbnb. Gorgeous like Airbnb. Gorgeous place. I'm like, where did you find this place? I want to stay there myself. Gorgeous. It like had a it like it was like on in this own little island fort like mm-hmm. area. Like it was a like boat. that's like some Marvel stuff. That's some after <laughs> Earth stuff. Like right. It was very futuristic, like, but Oh, I don't know. It was beautiful. They walk in there and Alex is there. She's like, so where's the cargo? And they're like, we only have this one. And she's like, oh, well, looks like something happened. And um, we have the footage. <laughs> she, she, she's going in. They I, have the footage. I just want to go go aside a bit. I, I'm a, I love Alex. Mm-hmm. As well. She mm-hmm. is a great host. And just, she, the, I love how like sometimes she can be like hella condescending, mm-hmm. and she she's willing to like stir the pot. Oh, very much stir the pot. She, and I think I think the mole is like the perfect game for that, because at least it's like you don't. Nec- it's like even if you're the biggest target, and people suspect you of that, 
It's like the, they could be wrong. Mm -hmm. I love when they make it like everything isn't always as it seems. So it's like exactly. this isn't. And, and I think as that's her job as the host is to make you think like, am I thinking this right? Am I am I overthinking this? Am I underthinking this? Did I even am I even close to thinking I'm the right thing? She she makes you believe that you might be on the right track, but then throws you that curve up like, oh, no, I'm not even close mm -hmm. to you. No, like, I love that. She's a great host. I do have to agree with her. She's a great host. Do you, so neither one of you guys watched the original seasons, right? Do you mm -hmm. all know who the original host of them all was back in the day? Anderson Cooper. Anderson Cooper. Which yeah. is really, this is also pre-out Anderson Cooper. This mm -hmm. is uh, yes. Mask closeted straight man uh, yes anderson cooper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so i think i still mm -hmm. i think anderson cooper would have been a great host even right now like and especially now with him being he he's very much himself now and freer now so i think he he, he can give us that news anchor side that we love from anderson cooper but also give us that little petty little you know you know um, smirky little you know the really big difference between Anderson Cooper and Alex is Alex is much more involved, like mm. physically present. Mm. Yeah. Anderson was a lot, was always kind of like distant, disembodied voice talking to these people over the phone. Mm -hmm. And then he would show up for the eliminations. And that was okay. kind of about it. Yeah. Alex is more Jeff Probst. And then Anderson's more like Jen Bot, like kind of. Yeah. You know, I can see that. But I feel like I feel like Alex is like even more involved with the cast than Jeff Probst. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, she literally rode. This isn't a spoiler. There's a challenge later on in the show. She literally rides with the cast to the location, <laughs> well, <laughs> riding by herself. And it, it, it's and it's like five seconds of dialogue between her and somebody else uh, who's still in the show at the time. And it, it's just five seconds of her just riding with them, and that's it. That's all you see. I, I love that. I do love hosts when they're involved and they're not, like you said, not just a disembodied member of the, of the, like, I'm here, you're there, we'll talk. And yeah, I like them being able to be in interactive with the cast. I love it. So she's a great host. I, I do enjoy her. Yeah. So anyways, uh, back to the footage. Mm -hmm. We have footage <laughs> of who took this cargo because, you know, it's five thousand dollars, big deal. So everybody's trying to figure out who it is, who might it be, and so she's like, "You all want to see?" Everybody's like, "Of course." They roll the footage, and it turns out that Will stole the cargo. Dom is devastated. He's like, "Oh no, not my bro! No, not that! No, come on, guy!" And he's like, "I don't want to believe that. I don't want to believe that. I don't. I don't. I don't want to believe that. Mm -mm. I don't. I don't. I don't want to believe that." Mm -mm. And Will is like, "Okay, look, look. I know this looks suspicious, but let me tell y'all what happened. So I found this note. Right? Found this note that says." Secret mission. If you could steal the cargo without nobody seeing you, you will double your pot. And that's what I did. I stole it and I doubled the pot for all of us. Cheer me. Praise me. I am Will. So, I, and I just want to say this. When it happened in the moment, I was like, oh, Will's not even an actual player in the game. Will is literally just here for five for the one mission and then he's gone and he's just there like i don't know if you'll ever watch like how to be a uh, who wants to be a superhero mm -hmm. but like kind of like that vibe and then it was just oh it was a mission they didn't have these in the original mo but okay cool <laughs> um i'm here for it but he, the whole the, this is when the egotism really started with will this is the part where he gets annoying because the first part of the first episode, he's very much like just another player trying to get the money out because he's in the high uh, up high group, and you know he does his job really well. And then after this, he's like, "I contributed five thousand dollars to the pot by myself. Worship my long hair that I constantly keep tied up in a man bun." <laughs> like, <laughs> I. <laughs> Yeah, he was very full of himself in that moment. He was like, I did this mission for all of you. And then you should be grateful. I mean, it works on Dom. 
Uh, He's like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, I knew it, I knew I believed in you. I believe I knew you. this romance is still on. I knew it. Me and you are like this. We're here. Like it was every, he just knew everything. He just knew he was right. And Will is the man. And Will is so he should be praised because he doubled the pot for all of us. We should be grateful. Thank you, Will. And Will is going to take that stance for many omissions that he feels like. You still should praise me because I'm Will. But we move. So everybody's relieved and thankful that... And I mean, you're glad that the pot is now $10,000. It was $12,500. $12,500 now. So everybody's mm. like, yay, great. We got $12,500 in the pot. Cool. Um, Yeah. Then that was pretty much it with them doing that. I was like, oh, I thought it was going to be more, but that's okay. Then they have to go on... Um, it's time for the quiz, right? Am I right? Yep, quiz is right. Yep, this. It yep. is quiz, time. quiz time. So, for those who have not watched them all, if you haven't, they have a quiz every every episode to find out who the players think is the mole, and you have to answer certain questions about the players who you think is this who that's going to eventually tell you who the mole is and if you rank the lowest if you get the lowest amount of questions correctly on the mole you will be eliminated so literally nobody's voting people off which i love i appreciate it's not somebody voting you off the game it's it's, it depends on your read of the game right it's your read is how you see things and if your reads are right um, yeah, I agree. I, I think it's a lot more fun that way. It makes the, because if it was everybody voting off, they would just vote off the people that aren't contributing to the pot and then the mole really wouldn't get to do anything. So it does make it more interesting. That's a lot more like player centric versus everybody else. You're playing against yourself, even if you're as a team trying to get money. Mm hmm. Uh, but I will point out, this is only a 20 question quiz. So if you don't know the answer to a question, you are in real trouble. If, if you don't know the answer to at least a couple of the questions. Um, and Would they do mention it. A couple of the players uh, talk about it. I think Avery was one of them uh, in the confessionals mentioned. Yeah, I'm just going to hedge my bets because somebody's going to be dumb and put all of their money in on one person. And like we mentioned, it was, want to get the thing cute? Is it cute? Oh, say. In, just in, ca in case you missed it, in case we didn't show that. We didn't show it enough. <laughs> I mean, I feel like on the mole, we need to over. We need to make sure people understand and know what's happening because they don't say stuff enough on these episodes. Mm -hmm. So I feel like our job here is to say what they don't say. Yeah. yeah. The other thing is too. This is also one of those weird Netflix edit jobs where they don't always air the results of the quiz or the whole quiz every episode. Uh, kind of like the circle in that way, where they have illuminations occasionally. And sometimes they happen. So, like, in the first three episodes, we get three eliminations. That doesn't last the entire show. It's very much, like, spread out. And it does get a little complicated and hard to follow at times. Like, when people go home and when they don't. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, so, we also, while they're taking the quiz, we get a peek of, like, some of these questions. I did not realize how specific these questions would be because it's like, it's not only about getting to know your fellow like competitors and fellow players plus mole, um, whoever that may be, but also it's like, what do you remember of these people? Mm -hmm. And throughout the episode. In it, it's again, it's only 20 questions, and the last question is always who is the mole, right? Yes, so when you think about it, you got a 1 in 11 shot of hitting it right on this first quiz, so you really can't count that one question. So you really have 19 yeah. questions with a bonus that might give you an extra luck if you're really lucky. Right. Unless and, you are the mole, then obviously you're gonna get perfect every time. I mean, if you're an intelligent player, which spoiler, the mole this season definitely played the game very well. Um, you definitely get that whole thing with the mole. Like, because they mentioned the mole should never go home. There's no reason for the mole to ever go home. 
Exactly. So we're going to keep on moving into episode two because also it's gone. It is what it is. He got most of the questions wrong. So we move into episode two where they are now being moved to a um, prison. Prison. Yeah. Boggo Road, by the way, one of the most infamous prisons in the history of the world, uh, especially in Australia, it's very well known. But uh, oldest prison in the world, too, right? I don't know about oldest, but it, it's very much. It was like 1800s, I think, was when it was around. It might be one of the older prisons in Australia. Yeah. Um, but Boggo Road is uh, known for like riots. It was mm-hmm. very much like an unhygienic prison. Um, Think of it as almost like the Alcatraz of Australia during mm. its time period when it was open. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a lot of the like rougher, tougher. You, these are the people we need to keep locked up, kind of prisons. Right, right. So they're going. To, they're going to a prison, and they're going to have to do a jailbreak. Uh, they they arrive at the prison, and uh, Sarah's there. It's like, hey. We're doing a, a jailbreak today, y'all. And what we're going to do is we're going to divide you up in teams of three. And two of you are going to be the masterminds who are going to lead your, I guess, help lead your people. You're going to pick the people who's going to go where and whatever. They're going to go out. And you're going to, you know, have things thrown at them throughout this time of to try to get people get out of this prison break. Now, this prison book is like an escape room to me. Like it's definitely much. It gave me escape it room vibes. It gave me escape room vibes. It gave me very much like okay, hey. Uh. I actually okay. So we had one of these like you know community meetups mm-hmm. um, in Toronto, and we did we did an escape room, and the one that I was in was very much similar to this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was, very, it was literally like a jailbreak or like a prison break. Yeah, the I also did a meetup and we also did an escape room and mine was more like episode four. Mm. And we'll leave it at that. But yeah, I do escape rooms a lot. Uh, not even just for meetups and stuff. I do them just like on a regular basis. Um. And the fun part about this particular escape room design was it was a lot of, like, skill-based stuff. Like, they were having to, like, try to find a way to get this key outside of the door Mm -hmm. with the limited amount of stuff they have in the room. They had, Mm -hmm. like, a couple puzzles. It was really cool. I really enjoyed it. So, I enjoyed watching this whole thing. I liked this episode. Um, The prison break was interesting. Um, So, let's break up. So, Dom and uh, Casey are going to be the masterminds for this uh, prison break. And um, Casey, I don't know. still don't know how I feel about her, but whatever. Then they break up the, <laughs> let's mm-hmm. move. They break up the teams. And so one team is Will, Samara, and Avery. Avery. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah. They're in one group. And then, then we have Joy, Kazi and Pranav? Greg. Oh, great, 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 great. They are another mm-hmm. group. And then there's Pranav, uh, Sandy, and um, Jacob. Jacob. And the, the last group. Don't worry, forgetting about him is totally accessible. Uh, um, <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry. He's so bland. I'm he's sorry. So bland. He's so bland. The man I'm is sorry. white bread. Um, yes, he is very much um, Wonder Bread, and, and that's an insult to Wonder Bread. I, I, I say, I fear. Um, but they're the groups. That's how they're broken up. And Dom and Casey are supposed to be like the people who's going to give them, help them with anything, any tools that they need to get out of this prison break. Mm-hmm. So let's start with the group of. The first group to get out was Pranav's group, right? Um, oh, no. Okay, we should probably mention though, um, they are originally given an hour for all three groups yes. to individually get out of their prison cells. Yes, uh, they're all located in different cell blocks, so they yes. can communicate between the different uh, groups. 
And then uh, all of their escapes are going to be essentially identical, only like yes. minor things change, like the numbers on the cells, and that's about it. Yes. Um, and Casey and Dom are given a couple of decisions to possibly change the amount of money that they can make from the mission. So, for example, it's supposed to originally be a ten thousand dollars if everybody gets out in an hour. Um, they get given the option to reduce the time uh, by ten minutes, so it's only fifty minutes for them to get out, um, and then they would change the value from 10,000 to 20,000. Right. Um, and it just keeps going and stuff like that. Um, yeah. First, when they first offer to get rid of, reduce the time, not get rid of, but reduce their time. And um, I, it, Casey was a little hesitant. She was kind of like, I don't know. I don't think they could do it in this amount of time. But Dom was like, look, Anything to make the more money, I want to do it. I want to do it. If we're going to make the money, mm-hmm. let's do it. Let's reduce the time. They can do it. I trust them. I have faith in them. They'll get out. But so they decide eventually to reduce the time. Like, sure, let's, you know, we'll do that. And um, yeah, so they reduced down 10 minutes down. And so the first group, was uh, let's talk about Avery's uh Avery uh Will and Samara mm-hmm. that group we'll talk about them first so like you said each of them are in the same ex- the the break is the same exact thing like everything yeah. is exactly like except locations of sales numbers and things mm-hmm. like that and so Will is across from Samara and she has this tiny whole window that she's looking through and he has um chest pieces pillows he's tearing up all kind sure. of stuff in his cell. they all have like standard stuff instead of a cell like a bed that kind of thing mm-hmm. um also I'd like to mention that they're all on the bottom floor of the cell block except Avery one. is up the stairs on the top floor mm-hmm. so she <laughs> you okay Laura? yeah it was a Something flew in my face. I'm like, oh, okay. I feel that. Um, but Avery's up on the top floor. Smart Mullen on the bottom floor. Uh, they both have little slots that they can kind of like see through their the door of their cells. But other than that, that's about it in terms of communication. They can talk, and that's about it. Mm-hmm. Um, all of them are still locked in. Uh, Samara sees her key to get out of her cell, but it's on this chain really high above her, and she can't reach it. Um, and then you have Avery, who doesn't have a key to her cell at all. Um, and then Will is trying to figure out how to get out of his room for a while. <laughs> right. He doesn't see a key. He doesn't see anything. And so he's looking out. And so he sees this thing on the floor outside of his cell. Mm-hmm. And he's like, Samara, look. Look out the, the your, your thing and see it, what is that on the floor outside of my door, and she's like, "It looks like a hair tie." Hair tie. <laughs> it looks like a hair tie. And he's like, tie "A thing. hair tie," and he's like, "It just looks like a hair tie. It don't look like nothing to me." And so he's like, "Uh, I don't know. It just doesn't. I don't know. It doesn't. I don't know what that is." And he's like, "Well, I'm not gonna worry about it." I'm not gonna worry about it because it looks like a hair tie. Mm-hmm. So he's still going on this search to try to figure out how to get out his room. Um, and they take a little bit of time. They take a lot of time. Yeah. So um, we'll we'll pause them because they take oh, some time. Let's oh, go real quick because I want to point out this really funny uh, moment that happens. It is the only time I genuinely enjoyed Will in these first three episodes. Will decides he's going to try to get whatever this thing is outside because, you know, whatever. He might as well because he can't really see what it is. It might be something useful. And he gets a better look. He literally pushes half of his face out this (laughs) tiny slot in his door. And he goes, Samara, is there a key on that? And Samara's like, no, I don't see one. And he's like, Samara, there's a key on that. (laughs) And it's... I don't like Will in these episodes, but I will admit that did make me laugh a little bit because it was just so dumb. And what was funny also with that is Samara was like, I don't see it. And he's like, it's a key literally sitting right there. And she's like, 
oops, oops. <laughs> <laughs> just, oops. Like, I don't, oops. I don't the know. only moments we get from Samara at all is literally her just saying oops. <laughs> but, um, so then we go to, uh, Subbuck F with, uh, Jacob Pranov and Sandy. Uh, Jacob is tearing through his cell like a madman. Mad He's ripping man. apart the pillows. There are feathers everywhere. Um, I forget. I think Sandy was the one on the bottom floor and Pranov was on the top. Uh -huh. um, so Pranov in the top floor, they have a little stool that like basically like a little Ikea stool that they're putting together. Um, oh, uh, to, just, you know, just trying to get this stool put together. And they assume that they need to get that stool down to uh, Sandy in her room mm -hmm. to get no Jacob's room. Jacob's Jacob. the one that has the who had the key outside the door on that floor. Was it Jacob or Sandy? Uh, I think it was Jacob. I one of them had the key on the hook. Yeah, I think they, Sandy had the key on the hook. Yes, and then Jacob had um the <laughs> key on the outside of the door. Yes. So unlike the other two groups, though, mm -hmm. Sandy decides screw it. I'm just gonna stack everything in my room together and i'm gonna get the key off the hook and sure. she does she actually manages to get it she's got a good vertical apparently so they get the key sandy opens her door uh goes across and they unlock jacob from his cell because they can see the key they just don't figure out how to get it right. uh unlocks jacob from his cell they go upstairs. Uh, Pranav's like, well, I guess I don't need this stool anymore. <laughs> um, <laughs> and Pranav tells him. So the other thing in Pranav's room is he has these numbers, which they assume are cell numbers uh, on it. And in one of those rooms is, I think, a Bible was, the, mm -hmm. was what it was. And mm -hmm. inside the Bible is Pranav, the key to Pranav's room. Mm -hmm. So they open the door to Pranav's room and cell block elf is out pretty quick. Actually. They're out pretty quick. Yeah, they yeah, out. They're, they're the first ones out, which yeah. is crazy. But see, a lot of people don't realize that the chess pieces on there were magnetic. Yes. So if they would have just put it out there to get the magnet, the magnet to get the key, it would have mm -hmm. they were able to hoist the key up. So that was the mm -hmm. the little uh little thing that the people had to do. Each room had a little something that you mm -hmm. could have used like yes and so that was a little piece that that they a lot of teams missed and this last team <laughs> greg joy and cassie oh greg joy God. and cassie this one they did they, the best they, they really did they tried but they were not oh <sighs> because well, casey and dom they they both said admittedly they intentionally put yep. greg and joy in the same group because they were the two that they were both the most suspicious of. Yes, and they wanted to make sure that they weren't, if they were the mole, they would lose this thing. Mm -hmm. So they wanted to check them out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they uh, they start, uh, Greg is the one on the top floor in mm -hmm. Cell Bucky. Joy uh, is has to get the, the, the hook. Mm -hmm. And Cassie has the key on the ring outside her door, right? Right. So Cassie asks Joy if she sees anything outside her door. Joy says no, not even a little bit. Um, and they assume for a while that Joy has to be the first person to get out. She has to get her key off that hook. So for a solid 30 minutes, all they are doing is trying to get Joy's key. And Joy just cannot reach this key for the life of her. I felt really bad for her. Um, and at this point is when Casey and Dom get their second uh, opportunity, which is they can spend $1,000 out of the pot to give each group a clue to help them escape, mm -hmm. right? So they do, both the crews, clues get told that, hey, y'all need to get this key outside of this one door to start working on this stuff. And that's when Will finds the key outside his door and uh, Cosi finds the key outside her door. They're both angry <laughs> because yes. they did not get told about this key, and the other person across the hall could have very easily seen it. Um, I especially will though, but I, I want to harken back on this. Will smashing his face said, There's a key, and it's so <laughs> funny. Yeah, that was interesting, and it's like even if I like Samara, like girl, even if you think it's a hair tie, you say something like mm -hmm. it's, it's, it might be something you could use to get out the door. So yeah, try to get it. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I would have been annoyed with both joy and Samara as well. 
Agreed. if I was on the other side because it's like you saw something outside my door and you mm-hmm. said nothing. But then it was still coming down to the wire when it came down to Joy, Kasi, and Greg's group. Like they yeah. just still was having mm-hmm. so many problems, so many issues trying to get out. And once Kasi had to realize how to get the pieces, and that was only because they wasn't that in the clue. Yeah, they mentioned that the chess pieces are magnetic, and that's right. when they start looking for the key. Um, right. So, also by this point, every Samara and Will, the second they get the the key outside, they get out in like five minutes. Like yeah, it's really quick. quick. Yeah, yeah. Um, really quick. Greg, Joy, and Kossi, though, not so much. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Kossi, so um, Will had fished the key out. He had attached the chess piece to one of his bed sheets. Mm-hmm. I don't remember what Kossi was using to try to get the key. But it, it was the chessboard. It was the chessboard. She uh, tried to like throw the chessboard to knock the key closer to her, and that mm-hmm. kind of worked, it but it was still difficult. Um, but she did manage to get the key finally. Yes. Um, so they have about five minutes left on the clock. Uh, Kasi is running upstairs to go get Greg because they figure out now, okay, the stool you have is for Joy to get her key. Uh, and they're going as fast as they can. And it's looking like they're not going to make it. <laughs> no. And then finally, uh, Casey and Dom get given their last choice, which is you can give back $10,000 that you uh, took out to, to decrease the time by five min- by, uh, ten minutes by 10 minutes to get five minutes back. So you can get, so you spend $5,000 to give them five more minutes. Um, and that choice approved, apparently was very, difficult especially for dom dom, dom, dom was did not, not want to do it he did not want to do it he was like what give money away i already gave out a thousand dollars to give him a clue we're gonna give out more money uh, the funny thing about it was casey was like yes immediately like she's, yes. yes do it do it and dom's like no i don't want to do that uh and that's when dom starts becoming suspicious of casey um which becomes important later um but Finally, they manage to. Casey convinces Dom to increase the time again, and they get out with about thirty seconds left, which yes. is very close. But they did make it out, so they managed to get fourteen thousand dollars for the pot. Uh, so that brought their total earnings up to that point to twenty six thousand five hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. They get out, and I mean. Was- at that point, they kind of had to just go for it, though. You did, because yeah. they weren't going to make it without it. Mm-hmm. They just were not going to make it without it. So it made sense for them to do it. I probably would have been the same way, like, Casey, like, we just got to do it. Mm-hmm. As much as it sucks to give away money, and this, if we give, if we don't, we lose everything. We got to yeah. at least spend a little bit to get the rest mm-hmm. of what we, you know, work for. So it made sense. So, yeah, they made it out, Then and, and they got, like you said, 26000 whatever, in their pot. Great for them. Mm-hmm. They go back to the house for what they think is dinner, but it's actually a quiz, honestly. No, uh uh-uh. uh. The quiz is after the red button mission is next. Oh, oh, the red <laughs> button mission. Not me forgetting all about the red button mission. Okay. This is my favorite mission they have the entire season. Uh I could never forget about this. Um, I will admit it is oh, slightly yeah. slanted towards the one group because they have an extra person. Mm-hmm. Uh, say, and he's just back. Welcome back, and he's back. <laughs> um, do you have any other comments about the prison break one? Did you hear the rest of the discussion? Yes, I did hear the talk about the hair tie. And that's <laughs> <sent me. laughs> it's just yeah. a hair tie. It's just a hair tie, but it's just a hair tie. But we're on to the red button mission. Because the red button mission is apparently AJ's favorite thing to talk about right now, and yeah. very excited. So this is the I, best mission the entire season honestly, for me. <laughs> it was uh, super either this or a mission that happens later when we talk about it in a couple okay. episodes. Well, I'll discuss it then. But um, so basically, uh, the group uh gets told, "Hey, we're gonna go to this." Oh, yeah, they're going out. We're going out. So everybody's dressed up in these really fancy clothes. Like th- their finale looks for Big Brother, if you will. <laughs> um, and they just split up into two cars. It's pretty arbitrary. There's no like, these are the five people that are right here, these six people right here, whatever. Um, and instead of going, and they drive for about an hour away from where they're staying at the time, uh, some near Bogger Road. And they end up at this warehouse <laughs> and they get split into two groups. So there's Sector 31 
which is uh, Dom, Jacob, Joy, Kasi, Samara, and Will. Mm -hmm. And then there's Sector 45, which is Avery, Casey, Greg, Pranav, and Sandy. Mm -hmm. um, so they get split into their two groups. And then Alex gets on the loudspeaker, the megaphone, whatever you want to call it. And it's like, look, if both of you all sit here for 45 minutes um, and don't do anything, $10,000 gets added to the pot. However, there's a red button. And if you can find the password that unlocks your red button and your group is the first person to press the red button, you all don't get any money, but everybody in your group is exempt from the next quiz, basically immunity from the quiz. And the, I, the second I heard, I was like, oh my God, this is brilliant. <laughs> this is amazing. Because the original moles, they had quizzes from time to time, uh, exemptions from the quizzes from time to time. It was never like such a big deal as it is in this season. Uh, which we'll, we see it a couple times throughout the season that exemptions are like amazing for all of them here. They are ready the moment they hear this. The two groups have two completely different approaches to this. Um, the other fun part, though, is the rooms are connected and every 10 minutes. They have a phone call between the two rooms so they can kind of figure out what's going on. Um, and it oh, it's just such a good this is the best yeah. task they've had. In I a love long time. that. It I love the game it becomes. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. I, I love how one group just out the gate. We mm -hmm. want we want we want that immunity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um and the other group is, you know, we want to make money. That's what we're here to do. That's the whole point is to make money, right? So they're like, yeah, we're just gonna wait. And that like you said, the other team was like, nope. We're trying to get immunity, period, bottom line. And they go for it right away. Mm -hmm. They're going for it. They run into the room, but they come up with a plan. They're like, look, Greg is going to stay here. He's going to answer. At least two of us have to, because at least two people had to be in the room. Yeah, so at Greg all and times. stay by the phone. Uh, yeah, two people had to be in the room at all times, and that was the stipulation of the of the challenge. Two people had to be in the room at all times. So Greg and Sandy stays by the phone while everybody else is off looking for these clues for the password. I think it's Greg and Casey instead of Sandy. Oh, sorry. My mistake. You're correct. Yeah, it was probably right. Casey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But... Um, yeah, they're there. They're they're waiting. So the other group is just standing by. They're waiting. They're trying to make yeah. the money. And so the first 10 minutes happen. The phone rings. Greg answers the phone. And he's like, um, oh, hey, y'all. Yeah, we're just sitting here. You know, just we decided what's the point of going for immunity when we're trying to build money in a pot. And everybody's like, oh, okay. So he's talking to the other team. And they're believing that they're all sitting there waiting like they are. I was like, mm -hmm. why not believe that? That's what we're doing. So we believe that they're doing. And Greg is selling it. This is the moment where I was like, okay, Greg is a player player. He's a player player. Mm -hmm. Like he's, you know, I might not vibe with him well, but he's a player. And I like that. Mm -hmm. um, he was just like, we're just, we're just chilling. That's fine. Everybody's just, you know. So that happens. They hang up and they move on. I will admit there's one moment here that really made me recognize Greg as a player because if he's just lying to them because that's what the group tells him to do, that's one thing. Not only – because he talks to, I think, Dom on the phone first, right? Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. asked to talk to – was it Dom or – did he ask to talk to Jacob or Will after that? Yes, he talks to Jacob. To, yeah, he talks to Jacob after that. He was confirming that these people were in the room mm -hmm. without asking them if everybody's in the room. And the other group did not do it back. They were, it was just like, hey, can we talk to Jacob real quick? And then nobody's like, hey, Greg, can I talk to, like, Pranav, for right. example? He bought them an extra 10 minutes of time mm -hmm. that quick. It mm -hmm. was so cool. Um, also, we should probably mention the password they get told is in a periodic table. In a table. In a table. Um, and there's all these sticky notes in this connecting room that have, like, um, oxygen that are like plus palladium or whatever. And they spell out words for them to put into this computer. Mm -hmm. And if they get a certain amount of guesses wrong, they lock themselves out for a period of time. For a I believe it's only a minute. It's only a minute. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, they they doing it, and it, like the clue says, it was in the table. 
just check in the table. Bam. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, got to be in this periodic table, on this table, on the chart. So they're figuring out, they're looking at the sticky notes, they're coming up with all these different combinations of words, what it could be. So group one, the first group, like they, they, they're doing it. They're putting in word after word, locked out. Wrong, mm-hmm. wrong, wrong, locked out. But they're going to keep going, fine. So the second 10 minutes happen, and Greg is still by the phone, answering the phone, and he's talking to. I want who was he talking was to? Will was it Will? Uh, I think Joy has the phone. I think it was. I know it was a woman. So mm-hmm. Joy. So it was Joy, and he was talking to her, and then he's like. She passes the phone to Dom. Yep. And then that's when everybody's kind of wondering, like, hold on. Something's not right. We can't, we don't hear anybody else. That's when it starts to click that something isn't right. This pe- this team is not, because Dom is like, he's saying things. Him and Jacob were like, he's very strategic on what he's saying. He's not saying we are here. We're here mm-hmm. by the phone. We, we stuck around. We're just chilling. It's like, I'm here. I'm by the phone. I am because not lying to them. He's not lying to say we are still here, but he's like, I am still, I'm just sitting here by the phone, you know, waiting until for the 45 minutes are up because I want to collect the money and da, da, da. So Dom is starting to pick up that maybe this is something ain't right. And then Jacob was like, I don't know. This just don't seem right. So Dom was like, Hey, let me hear everybody. Tell everybody to say, Hey, like give us a shout out. Say, Hey, and, that's when everything goes to crap for this team. So Greg is like, send Casey to go tell everybody to get mm-hmm. back here so they can do a group hey. They Casey- got very lucky, though, because Sandy was already on her way to put in another password into the computer. So Sandy's just in the hallway, and Casey's able to get Sandy and say, Sandy, you go talk to them. I'll but talk that's to not what the they phone. asked for, and that's yeah. they wanted a group hey. And mm-hmm. Casey went down the hall and stayed there. Didn't tell anybody to come back. She just nope. stayed there. So that literally blew up their plan. And the other team was like, they looking for the password. We got to start looking for the password. Mm-hmm. So now they're off scrambling, looking for this password. And it's like the game is on now because now both teams know that everybody's looking for the password. So they're off and they're looking and they're looking. Uh, they coming up with words. Lock getting locked out. They other team coming up with words getting locked out. It comes down to the last few minutes, and Sarah comes back over. There, Who? And, huh? Alex. What I no. call her, Sarah? Sarah. Yeah, Sarah. <laughs> who is Sarah? I don't know who Sarah is. Child. There ain't no Sarah. On this ain't show. no Sarah on this cast. Ain't no Sarah in my life. Hold on. Alex <laughs> goes back over the intercom, and she's like, "I have a clue." I said it's in the periodic table. Uh, in the table. Mm-hmm. And they're like, in the ta- in the periodic table. Oh my God, it's actually in the frame of the periodic table. So both teams are running off and they're scrambling and they grab that table and they tear it apart and they find the last piece to the puzzle that was missing. And they realize that they need to spell out the word brain. Salvation. Salvation. Yes. Salvation brain was one of the first is the first yeah. Yeah. S-A. And yes, brain was the first thing for now. Trying mm-hmm. that one right. Yeah. But salvation. So the way they edited this was genius. I just want to say. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the the cinematography of it all because it was very much having me like, who, which, which team mm-hmm. is go get it first because both of them got it at what we think is the same time yeah and it's like oh my god oh my god oh my god and so they run they get salvation they type it in the computer access granted hit the red button for what we see at the same time and i and i want to point out this is the first time you really see pranav as this really smart player yes. because not only is he at that periodic table ripping it off the wall getting that uh, sticky note out of it. The other group, you see, they spell out the entire word first, right? Mm-hmm. The second Pranav is like S A L V salvation. He just runs. He yes. doesn't even wait mm-hmm. to confirm it because he's like, well, at this point, 
the other group's probably around the same time as we are. We gotta go. Right. And I was like, yeah, okay, Pranav, I see you. Yeah. I see you. Exactly. It was like perf. Like, <laughs> this was such a, I agree, AJ, I can't believe I almost forgot this. This was such a good mission, and it was so <laughs> fun to see, and the editing was done perfectly for them to make us, like, be on the edge of our seats like who hit that button first mm -hmm. who did it and so they both hit the button they come out and they're in front of alex yes. in these chairs in this dark room with the spotlight like oh That's my god some saw kind so, of yeah very yeah. dramatic <laughs> it's very dramatic i was like okay and so alex is like i can tell you that $10,000 is not going into your pot because somebody hit the button. And everybody's like, oh, we know, sis, but okay, let's go. go. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, oh, we know, we know, it's cool. Um, and so she's like, so who, who hit the button first? And by a very small margin. And when I say small, I mean small. It margin. was small. He said it was like 10 seconds, I 10, think, or something like that. Something like that. So yeah. like very much seconds between mm. each creep team hitting the button. She said, but the winning team was sector 45. Wait, I, I was doing it for my dramatic pause. Oh, you ruined sorry, it. I you remember. Oops. I'm sorry. I remember. I was doing my dramatic pause. In the words of Samara, oops. Oops. <laughs> right. Oops. oops. <laughs> <laughs> well, AJ stole my thunder, but se Sector 35, 45 won. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so Sector 45 wins. They're all immune. And mm -hmm. Sector, uh, the other team, I looked at them like, just a bull of crap. They they were not yeah. happy. They were like, y'all know one of the mole is one of them. A mole is one of them because mm -hmm. we was actually trying to get money and they was running around like so they were very upset. Very so upset. For the, so for the record, that means Avery, Casey, Greg, Pranov, and Sandy are all safe from this next quiz. Don't even have to take it. Don't have to take uh, it. Yeah, and then Sector 31, which is Dom, Jacob, Joy, Kazi, Samara, and Will are the ones that are up for elimination. Yep. So it's a and one in so, six shot. Right. Mm -hmm. Versus are one in 11, percent. which, oof. oof. It, was, it was crazy. But they take the quiz, and they get their little cell phones, and Alex is like, I'm going to enter these names in one by one in no particular order. And if it comes up green, you safe. If it come up red, you, you are fine. You gone. We're pretty much done. And so she starts putting in the names, putting in the names. And eventually she gets to Samara's name and it comes up red. Mm -hmm. And Samara is gone. Um the really cool thing about the show though is normally on shows, whenever somebody gets eliminated, they at least give them a time to say goodbye. Nope. On the mole, they're just like, no, you gone. Nope. You don't, you don't nope. say goodbye. You don't, you don't say, say nothing. You are you leave gone. Man. You leave a you looking at these people in their faces. I mean, but you can't be mad at them because they didn't vote you out. This is not a vote out thing. So mm -hmm. it's no point of trying to blow up nobody's spot on your way out the game. It's just like you just failed the quiz. So mm -hmm. you just leave. So you're just like, okay. Yep. <laughs> and they Alex they don't, even, they don't even get like a like a they don't get the hug. They don't, they don't have like a witty cast phrase kind of exit like drag race. Like it's just, oh, you leave. That's right. right. Word, they, witty catchphrase. Nothing. <laughs> they don't have nothing. It's just like a uh, red button. Red. Your your cell phone is red. Alex walks over, scoops you up, and walks you out the door. You don't get to hug nobody. <laughs> you you don't get to say goodbye. You don't get to wave at him like see mm -hmm. y'all. Nothing. It's just whoop. I, I think it does kind of make sense, though, because if you're already out, you know, well, OK, the people that I hedge my bets on and try to spread my answers between, they're probably not in the mole. So mm -hmm. if I'm saying bye, I could just whisper in somebody's ear, hey, uh, someone's right. not the mole. And, right. you know, right. You, they just have that information now. Yeah. Which is going to come into play in the next episode. I think why well, some... Some episodes, why things make sense, why it, you know, but yeah, so Samara's gone.
just up out into the car, driven into the night. Bye, girl. Up, oh, not purple again. Oh. <laughs> she got purple. Okay, not purple. It's we it's, it's a shame. Thing, and it's the funniest thing in the entire episode, Oops. and that's it. It's a hair tie. <laughs> it's a hair tie. <laughs> and, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was that. Tomorrow's gone. Then we move on to our next episode, which th- they are now transported to a. Uh, oh, what is that? Not they're that. in. They're near the Great Barrier Reef. Right, the Great Barrier uh, Reef. Like it's beautiful. Beautiful. The same as like tropical resort kind of thing. It's like cabana looking. It's, house it's a beautiful house it's like Mm -hmm. they they sent them to paradise and it was like yeah you're here in this beautiful home (laughs) and this great place but we have a mission so don't get too comfortable (laughs) don't get comfortable at all Mm -hmm. because we're this paradise that you're looking out over as the sunset is going to be the backdrop of your worst nightmare so get ready Mm -hmm. so the mission let's just jump right to the mission because honestly a lot of just talking happened before it was just like oh this is beautiful this is great here we are well there were two missions I know two missions the first part of the missions they walked into this place sorry as they were getting everything you know looking around loving the place they were sent to an office they were sent to an office where these case files were just sitting there. And on this top ty- on this typewriter, okay, first of all, I love the effect that you put the typewriter the note on the typewriter and just like mm-hmm. like somebody yeah. was typing it but forgot to finish it and so it's just left sitting in the <laughs> I love that. Like little things like that. I was like, I see you, Mo. Okay, I see y'all. The production value. Love it. The budget. <laughs> The budget. <laughs> all of these beautiful places. And then you give me little things like a unnote. Like they could have put it on a laptop and it could have been like an email. But no, they gave me retro typewriter, ream and everything. And they, and they can rip. Oh, love it. I love the sound of a typewriter. I don't know. It's just this it for me. But um, so they go to the office and there's like, you can read this case study. If you read the case studies of all the contestants on in the cast, you can get some valuable information. But if nobody does it, money will be added to the pot. $10,000 too. $10,000. too. It's a lot of $10,000 be added to the pot if nobody looks at the case studies. And Dom goes in there first and he's like, absolutely not. Absolutely not. I'm not looking at these case studies. There's no way. Um, I want the $10,000. We need the money in the pot. Absolutely not. I'm looking at these case files. So we see people go in one by one like, "Mm, nah, oof, tempting, but uh, nah, I I could, but uh, nope, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. And that's what we get. We get a lot of people like, I don't, I don't know. I just, I mean, I just don't see other people not doing it. I just don't see, I know somebody's going to do it. Mm -hmm. And I know somebody's going to lose this money for us. I just don't, mm, no, I'm not going to do it. 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 So that's what we see. Nobody does it. So we move on. And they said that if uh, also the note mentioned, if you don't look, your integrity will be rewarded. Mm-hmm. So that is mm-hmm. what it's left with. That's what we're left with. If you don't look at the at the case study, your integrity will be rewarded. And so that's that. Nobody, as we know in this moment, was going to look at these case studies. Mm-hmm. So then we move on to the next day and the next mission, which is where they all are at the barrier reef and mm-hmm. they want they have to split the teams into two teams again boat and search they have to the people on this boat will go out into the water and they have to search an area a big span mm-hmm. to find four cargo blocks 
Once you find these cargo blocks, you have to go deep dive into the ocean and you release these cargo things and have them come up to shore. And once you get all four cargo blocks on the boat, that's worth, um, I think it was 5000 a piece or 2000 2000 each. 2000 each, right. And there were five yep. of them, so they could have had $10,000. Right, right. <laughs> so 2000 a piece for each of the cargos. And then... The search team had to go by air, land plane, seaplane, until up into the into the sky to look down on the be on the beaches and find a uh kit or a dinghy is what they mm -hmm. call it. Yeah. Find the dinghy. I am so proud of myself for remembering all of this stuff. Yeah. I'm so proud of myself. Yeah, I'm not even ashamed to admit I'm on Wikipedia right now. With this one. <laughs> like, just pulled up, just make sure I'm not forgetting anything. I'm not pulled up anything. I saw <laughs> but they had to go find the dinghy on the yeah. beach. And I love how some of them are like, "What's a dinghy? What's a dinghy?" Right. <laughs> <laughs> and you could just see Pranav just has his face in his hands the entire time there in this damn plane. Uh, He's just so over these people. Like these it's people so are so funny. stupid. Like these are the stupidest people alive. But it, but it's crazy because before that, right before, let me before, let me backtrack a little. Um, Aaron, uh, Aaron, uh, Pranav and Avery had a have a conversation before the mission, and Avery and Pranav are very much seen as a duo. They they are very close. And everybody knows it. They're not ashamed. They're not hiding it from anybody. It is what it is. But Pranav, and Pranav made a observation that, you know, people should, he don't, he don't care if people think he's the mole because they'll just keep guessing him and they'll be wrong, blah, blah, blah. And, and Avery was like, you know, I've never even thought about that as a, a strategy. I, I haven't thought about it, but now I'm thinking about it. Hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. That's going to affect how this mission is played out. So we'll continue talking about that. So they're in the sky and they're looking for the dinghy. <clears throat> Avery spots said dinghy on her side of the plane. She sees it, but she don't tell nobody she sees it. She's also claiming that she has air sickness. Air sickness. She's yeah. sick. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the thing is, it's believable though mm -hmm. because they they're not on a plane together. They're just driving everywhere. So mm -hmm. she's like, "Yeah, I'm air sick. I just don't feel very well." And eventually, so Avery's on the right side of the plane. I think Pranav's the one beside her. He's in the middle. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then and Pranav eventually sees it out of her window. So and he's like. How do you not? How do you not see that? How you not see that right there? <laughs> like literally, I'm still sitting a seat away from you, and I just leaned over and happened to see that. How did you not? Okay, so she's like, "Oh, I'm just sick. I just I can't. Mm -hmm. I don't feel. I don't feel that I'm sick." And um, so they find Pranav sees it. They land the plane. They go head back into. Uh, they go grab all the stuff. From they they all run back to um take the stuff take nope. the stuff to the the boat crew mm -hmm. so they grabbing all this stuff and they're like do we grab everything Dom is like yes we grab everything we don't leave anything but I was like grab everything grab it grab it and so they take all the stuff and they run into the beach. Here's where Avery strikes again, y'all. And I kind of love we it. We should probably mention what they're grabbing, though. Oh, so yeah. yes, go ahead. Yeah. So they're trying to grab, um, basically, it's like a lifting balloon. So they're going to give the balloons to the boat group, and they have oxygen tanks, and they're going to fill up the balloons with oxygen to get the cargo off the ocean floor, because apparently it's too heavy for them to lift by themselves. So they have to get their stuff to the boat group before the boat group can get any of the cargo out of the floor, um, which makes their job a little bit more important, to be honest. Um, and also, I had never heard of one of these balloons before. Like, I've never I heard of them either, but they're really cool. Yeah, it was really neat because the only like thing I can think of that's like boat, like a lifting kind of thing, or like a 
float kind of thing. Survivor just uses buoys all the time. So yeah. I, to me, it's just like, oh, it's just tied down. So the second they undo the knots, it'll just float up to the top. No, these are actual chests that they need to use this kit on to get them out of the water because they're just too heavy. So we're seeing um, on the boat group, though, you have Greg and is it Joy that are staying on the boat? Or yeah, Greg and Joy are staying on the boat while Jacob, Casey, and Will are searching the water trying to find where this car goes at. And in the process of trying to find where the car goes at, Will, being dumb AF, decides, I'm just going to ram my leg into some rocks. Um, cuts himself open, kind of bad, um, to the point where they have to call medical in. And medical's like, look, dude, you can't be in the water right now. You can stay in the challenge, but you have to stay on the boat. So medical's fixing his leg. I think that's when Joy gets in the water. So you mm -hmm. have... Joy, Greg, and no, Joy, Greg, not Greg. Joy, Casey, and Jacob are looking in the water for these crates, and Greg is on the boat, like trying to supervise. Um, <laughs> and it's it, it's bad. This is probably the worst Greg look has in this like first three episodes. The first time Greg is like, everyone's like, Greg is not doing anything at all. It's getting on our nerves. Um, but then you were mentioning what was going on with the plane group, Lana. <laughs> on the way back from the dinghy. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um that was so yeah, the dinghy happens and they're running back, they're running back with the stuff. And this is where we see Avery strike again on her mission to make people believe she's the mole just so they won't they can continue to vote for her and she can go. And they can go because she obviously says she's not the mole. She has the flotation device thing, the oxygen tank, and she's carrying it, and she's like, oh, I'm so tired, just so tired, and she drops it on purpose. Doesn't even drop it. She literally just goes, and she's just like, walks off. And <laughs> keep on moving. She just drops it and goes. She just goes. She lets it go, and she keeps on moving. So they're like, what the heck? So Dom is behind her, following her, and Pranav is behind her as well, and they're like, who dropped the oxygen? So Dom takes the, his stuff that he's carrying. He's carrying like armfuls of stuff, mm -hmm. and he runs to the, to the to the water crew, gives it to them, runs back to grab the oxygen tank because he's like they probably need all of this stuff. So he runs back, grab the tank, take it to her, and takes it to them and gives it to him. And he's like, "Who had this oxygen tank?" Who had it? And Avery was like, I mean, I had it. I, I did. And, I, I, and then I, I dropped I it. I kind of got tired, you know. And he's like, that's suspicious. That's that weird. weird. That you just dropped the oxygen tank <laughs> that we was running for. You had one tank and you dropped it. So Dom is very much all in on his plan. On his um, his suspicions on Avery at this point. Avery is like, mm Mm. So I bring up that same space, that Twitter space again, that Pranav, Dom, and Avery were in. Um, they apparently mentioned that hike on the show, it did not look that bad. It looked like maybe half a mile at the most. Apparently, this was like four to five miles of sand that they had to go across to get this stuff to the boat group. <laughs> so they were going as fast as they could, but you're on sand, so you're losing traction. You're carrying all this heavy stuff. So Dom um, said after the fact in the edit, it looked that made it look like he was like super suspicious of Avery. Turns out Avery was not the person he was putting his answers on for that test. And we'll talk about that in a minute when we get to the test, if you don't care. Um, but uh, Avery was talking about last. She's like, yeah, I figured you weren't suspicious of me for dropping the tank. I thought you would have been suspicious because I didn't see the bow. And which that would have been more suspicious to me too when you mm -hmm. find out everything all together. Um, but yeah, so they get the stuff to the water to the boat team, and that's when chaos ensues. So Will is out of the water, he can't swim. Greg is like supervising, air quotes, uh, the three people in the water. They finally find the first the little cache of cargo chests, they're all like right beside each other, and Casey, which has this hidden talent, she is a great swimmer, right? So Casey is diving down, she's got the goggles on, and she's 
connects the balloon really quick. She gets the oxygen tank on it, and they get the first piece of cargo. However, in the process, she is now exhausted. She is super tired. Exactly. She's like, that took everything out of me. She was underwater for a while, too. Like, you could tell this was like, yeah, I understand. Mm -hmm. So everyone's like, Greg, get in the water and help her. Because Jacob and Joy are doing something else with a different something going on. They're trying to get the stuff back from the, the other stuff from uh, where Avery had left the oxygen tank. They're trying to get mm -hmm. that supplies. So Greg goes out in the water and Casey's like, hold the oxygen tank while I dive down and attach the balloon. Greg's just like, <laughs> just let's go of the oxygen tank. It okay. falls to the ocean floor. Okay, wait, before we jump into that, because the reason Greg is on the boat mission is because Greg told everybody, I'm a strong swimmer. I'm a strong yeah. swimmer. And so they're like, great, you're out there. And when he gets in the water, he is doing some sort of doggy pedal. Yeah. Back <laughs> like slipping, backstroke. With backstroke, the feet, no, but not no really. Water. Just kind of yeah. like, oh, wait, I have to put my vest on. Wait, what, Mr. Strong Swimmer? You, huh? This is, this is up there with like Jatia from Survivor in terms of how bad someone has exaggerated their levels of swimming. It was awful to watch. It was <laughs> the most cringy thing I have seen on the show to date. It, it was bad. It was real bad. I mean, just sweet. I was just like, oh, not him. <laughs> Not him, oh, Jesus. and he's and he's wearing like this life the the preserver as like a as like, <laughs> diaper, like a diaper, but like mm -hmm. I was very confused by him. I was like, "What is he doing? Why is okay? <laughs> All right, so yeah, they <laughs> they go and they he drops the tank, like as you said, drops the tank to the ocean floor. Casey is like, I gave you the tank. What did you? He was like, that was what that was. Like, what? Oh, and just, right as that happened is when the mission, the time for the mission ends. Time is over. So, the, they only get two thousand dollars in their bank. Which, after all of that work, if I'm Casey and I'm Dom, and to a lesser extent Pranav, mm -hmm. I'm angry. I would and, have been and Will too. Will like oh, literally, I'm. Busted myself open for y'all, and yeah. this is what we get like nothing. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, angry, angry is what I would have been. Yeah, but they get two thousand dollars, they head back, and so <laughs> for a while at least, they get two thousand dollars. Yeah, for a while, yeah. they get two thousand dollars, and they're going into their bank and they go back to the house. And Alex is being Alex. And Alex is showing up like, hey, y'all, remember when we talked about this case study? Yeah, we talked about it. Now it's time to figure it out. Yep. And she said, meet me in my office. So one by one, she wants to have one-on-one -on -one time with everybody in her office, which office that they went and watched, looked at those case studies or not. And she asked them point blank, did you look? And they're like, um, folks like, no, I didn't look. She was like, we have footage. You know that, right? We have the footage. And they're like, mm -hmm. did you look? No, 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 no. Nope, didn't look. So it gets to Greg, and she was like, Greg, we have the footage. Did you look? And Greg is like, yeah. Of course I looked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I looked. And she's like, because she told him, you, you, you didn't get the $10,000. She told everybody the $10,000 was not given because somebody looked. So everybody knew somebody looked. So they were a little <laughs> annoyed, but they were like, okay. Yeah. So but Greg. Not only did Greg not look. But not Greg not. Then Avery also. Avery also looked. Look. <laughs> Which was kind of surprising to me. Um, Like in the edit, it, they didn't really hint at it. Because, you know, Avery was kind of being portrayed as like, oh, yeah, Pranav's kind of, like, helping her game. And she's giving him, like, bits and pieces of information. And this is when Avery's like, no, I looked. I looked. Absolutely, I looked. Of course I looked. Why wouldn't I look? Somebody else is going to as well. Why wouldn't I look? Right. Uh, she looked. Greg looked. So 
But the interesting thing was they did tell them that if you didn't look, your integrity will be rewarded. But this is the reward that they got. Somebody was going to get immunity because, you know, to reward you for not looking. But there's the catch. If you want immunity, you have to bet the most money from the team pot in order to get the immunity. Which at this time rested at twenty eight thousand five hundred dollars. Exactly. Exactly. Yes, <laughs> that's a lot of money in a pot. So, especially because at this time they'd only done a couple missions too. Yes. So that's a lot of yep. money for them. That's a lot of money for three it or is. four missions. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's twenty eight thousand. Like Ten thousand per mission. Yeah. Yeah. They were, at they were least. doing really well. They were yeah. doing really well. So they got the to um, write down their bid of what they would sacrifice from the team pot in order to secure their immunity. And we're seeing some numbers or what we think are some numbers of being written down in the past and then not seeing anything. We're just seeing them right. And so then they leave us with Alex giving the face like, oh, shock. So we're like, okay, who? What? <laughs> huh. So then they go to it's Alex comes down and she reveals the the twist, the plot twist that is the people were bidding to get immunity, but they had to guess who was the one who looked. They had to figure out and guess who who looked. And if they feed it correctly, the bid will be taken, the money will be out of the pot, and that's just it. That person is immune. If they guess wrong, then the money stays where it is, nobody's safe, we move on with their day. They go to the next quiz. So Alex says, the pot range, the money that people decide to take range from $5,000 to she's average out to, from five thousand to seven. Yeah, yeah, that was the average to seven thousand. I was like, oh, okay, that's not bad. I'm thinking nobody risks that much. It's not bad. Again, kudos to the editing team because y'all made me believe it's not that bad. It's you know, it couldn't be that bad. Nobody's risking a mm-hmm. whole lot of money. I mean, they made more than both of those numbers in the first mission alone. They made 12500 in that first mission. So Exactly. Think, oh, even if they risk like 10 k which if that's the average is like five, so 10, right. 12000 12, it's not bad. like a lot of money, but in grand scheme, it's not a ton. It's not a ton, and it's not oh. nothing that they could make right back up. So it was like, okay, cool. Not that huge of a deal. And then. And then. <laughs> This was my favorite moment in all three episodes combined. (laughs) Alex says, the highest bid was, hold on to y'all butts, $25,000. What? Dom's reaction. Dom's reaction. (laughs) You. That would have been me. Like, are you serious? Somebody, 25, we only got $28,000 in this pot and you risked 25000 of our money so you can be safe? Like, what? And the funny thing about it was, I don't know if anybody noticed, but do you all notice who they all looked at at the same time when they were saying who got that guess, who made that guess? Every single person on that couch, with the exception of the person who made that bid, looked at Greg. They all <laughs> thought Greg did it. And Greg's just sitting there, just chill, minding his own business. He doesn't, he's not that surprised by this. I was like, oh my gosh. Everybody's like, whoa, whoa. So <laughs> then Alex says, and the person. Who bid twenty eight? I mean twenty five thousand dollars is joy. 
And everybody's like, $25,000, Joy? Seriously? Really? And you have a couple other really good reactions, too. Cossie had a very big face to this. She didn't really, like, verbally emote, but she was <laughs> stunned. You had Will, who was collectively losing his mind verbally at uh, Joy. He's like, I put all of this money in the pot, and you spend it for immunity for yourself? And I'm like, you put maybe five grand of that money in the pot, but okay. <laughs> like, just, it, it was so funny. And Joy is sitting there like, yes, she I did. Mothered. She mothered. She's like, let me explain why. And I saw an interview. I did see an interview. Joy was like, they didn't show my full explanation because I told them the reason why I did what I did. But they, of course, they had to edit it down. And it looked like just me going, I did it. And that's it. But she said, but I gave a whole explanation on why I did it. Now, I didn't listen to the interview to find out why, because I still wanted to finish watching the show. But I was like, okay, I'll go back and check out why's later. But so, Fun fact, she did mention in a couple of interviews about it. And one of the things she said was, I had been guessing one of the main people I had been putting on in my quizzes was Samara. So now that Samara's out of the game... I can't guess for her anymore. I need to fig- I need more time to figure out who my next person's going to mm-hmm. be. So she was trying to take time to get her stuff together. So that was the reason she was really going hard for the exemption. But she was also trying to m- see if she wanted to know for sure if Greg looked at the dossiers. Because she was thinking that Greg was going to be her next suspect. But she figured if he did, he probably wasn't the mole. So she was she was kind of playing some forty chess, in, in a weird way. Mm-hmm. No, so, I yeah. I just thought this was very savage of Joy. Yeah, it was great. Like, <laughs> I live. I, I was living. So then Joy, Alex asked Joy, Joy, who do you think read the dossiers? And Joy's like, Greg. <laughs> And everybody's like, oh, shoot. <laughs> everybody thought Greg. Everybody knew it. They were like, Greg did it. We know who did it. They were like, ah, oh, we just lost $25,000. They knew it the second she said his name. They were like, hope she get it wrong. Hope she get it wrong. Nope. She got it right. She Because everybody knew. Everybody knew Greg. That, that just seemed like a Greg thing to do is to read the things. And she was like. I mean, I would have read it. 100%. You, you have to. Okay, you're telling me, Lana, that if you were on the show, you would not have read this dossier. I would not have read it, but I would have guessed that you did it. Are you serious? It. I'm serious. I wouldn't have okay. done it, but I would have guessed that you did it. I I really don't know where I would be. I'm like, I could, there's pros and cons to both, mm-hmm. and I would be super torn. Mm-hmm. Um, But... I mean, if I was the mole, yes, I would have read it. Of course I would have read it. If I was the mole, yeah, I would read it. Because I'm not going to put $10,000 into the bank. I'm, that's not my job. Mm-hmm. But if I'm trying to make money, then I wouldn't have read it. Yeah, if I was trying to make m- m- It's like there's one part of my mind that's like, oh, I want to make money. I don't want to read it. But also I'm, also, I'm also thinking, and this is probably the side I would go with as well, where I'm like, I would look because I figured someone else would look. So Mm -hmm. even if, because obviously it only takes one person to look, and that ten thousand is away. That that'll be the thing. If if I my read on the players, I would have to have. But this is the mole, so you know what? I probably would have did it because Mm -hmm. I know the mole probably would have did it. That only makes sense. So I probably Mm would have did it too because it's like the mole is going to do it, regardless. I think in my head, I would think. Then that's what my my brain was like. The mole is probably going to do it, and it only takes one person to do it to us to lose the money. So if we're gonna lose the money anyway, I might as well get some information and read it. So I probably would have did it. Strike that other part from the record. Yeah, I probably would look too. I probably would look too. So, but because she got the answer right, that means Joy has an exemption from the next quiz, and twenty five thousand dollars is gone from the pot. So they went from having twenty eight thousand five hundred dollars to having. Thirty thousand five hundred. Yep. Crazy. Crazy. So and it's funny because it was like we can make it back up. 
So for the record, uh, when they had thirty five hundred dollars left in the pot, at that point, if they would have made every single dollar that they had available to them, they would have had seventy thousand dollars. And that is just such a nuts difference to me. It's crazy. Huge. It's huge crazy. But then they take the quiz. And they have to take this quiz and somebody got to go. And uh, unfortunately for some and cheers for others, the person eliminated was Dom. Yeah. Dom got it wrong. Got most of the questions wrong. And the house took it pretty hard. They were kind of sad to see Dom go because they really liked Dom. They really liked him and appreciated him. And they were like, we knew Dom wasn't the mole. He just didn't give out mole-like behavior. We all liked Dom. Everybody liked Dom. But Dom was eliminated. And he just got up and left because that's what you do on the mole. You get scooped up and you go. And uh, yeah. That's the first three episodes. That's where we're at. That's the, three episodes. <laughs> That's the first three episodes. It only took us two hours to discuss it, but it's okay because they were fun. They were. And we, we discussed three episodes in two hours, so I think we're, I'm pretty proud of us. <laughs> okay, Lana, before we end the episode, okay, mm -hmm. and you said I have already seen the whole thing, so we can't do this, but we'll ask you. Oh, wait a minute. No, you already know too. Dang. Oof. Never mind. I was going to ask you what uh, the mole was, but you got spoiled, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, I know. Okay. Okay. So we won't talk about who the mole because I know who it was. Okay, but Sam, at this point, who did you think was the mole when you were watching? Who did I think? Yeah. Based on the first three episodes. Um, based on the first three episodes, mine, my mind went to... So I ruled out Avery. I ruled out mm -hmm. Dom. I ruled out Will. Mm -hmm. Um, And my top three were kind of the obvious mm -hmm. with Greg, Greg Joy. Joy. Actually, no, sorry, just those two that were the main obvious ones. So, I at this point, when I was watching, I was like, in my head, I'm like, yep, I know exactly who the mole is. It's Jacob. And I was like convinced it was Jacob because at that point, I was like, oh, Jacob hadn't done anything, he literally did nothing at all. And the only things he had done were not contribute that much to the water mission and kind of like take his time doing some things. And then uh, his group was the water group and he was the one that had told them that they should open the clue. So that's like, Oh, we just cost them $2,500. And also I know this clue is not going to tell them where the location is. So at minimum, even if they do find it, it's still going to be $2,500 gone. So I was like, Oh, okay. It's probably Jacob. That was my guess at the time. At this point, I was like, I don't think it's the obvious. Like, I didn't think it was Greg. I didn't think it was Joy because I thought that was too obvious. So my thought was, it's probably Casey or it's probably Samara. Because I was like, those are the two people who are getting very limited time. They're getting very limited edits. Like, they're not contributing a whole lot and Casey was losing money at the yep. prison break tribe a prison break mission and I'm like she seems very like somebody you wouldn't think she was a yeah. mole so actually yeah I'm gonna take back one of my answers so I didn't think it was Greg because it was too obvious and I figured like oh Joy taking it out was like really so my mind did go to Joy but mm -hmm. also, like, it did go to Casey, and, like, my top suspect was Casey because of her screwing up the their plan uh, yeah. during the, yeah. during the, the red, red button, button uh, challenge. Yeah, the red yeah. button. Mm -hmm. The red button challenge. Thank you. Yeah. I, I That was – and that was another thing. Once she started – when she did that, I was like, oh, that thing. So she was one of my top – these at this point, she was definitely – her and – and Samara, but then when Samara left, I was like, well, okay, not her. Um, then who took Samara's place after the third episode was probably, um, um, what's the girl's name? Sandy. Sandy, yeah, because uh, once again, purple. Yeah, once again, she just did nothing. <laughs> And like I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for the people who is not getting the edit, who's not getting a lot. And so I was like, mm, okay, I can see her. 
So those are my top three mm -hmm. at this point. Yeah. But I still got, I'm going to jump right into episode four or five. Well, I've watched four. I'm going to jump into episode five and six probably tonight when we get off because I got nothing else to do. So I'm going to watch five and six. We're going to be right back here next week to talk about episodes four, five, and six. Um, Maybe with the same panel, we might have more. We might, you know, might have less, but we're going to be here. We're going to talk about the mole and you know what to do. Follow, like, subscribe to our channel. If you appreciate the content that we're putting out to you, we enjoy doing it. So we're going to continue to do it. But if you enjoy us, we would love to keep giving you all the tea on this reality that we love to talk about. So follow us also on Twitter on at the cup underscore reality to get all the updates and notifications on when we're dropping our next videos. And so you'll never be out to know. We'll always tell you what we're going to do. And if you're just cool and you like us, because what's not to like follow us all on our Twitters, our personal Twitters at lady J 78 at D Monte and at AJ Wilson, six, seven, eight, Follow us all on Twitter because we have interesting content that we like to talk about on our own page and stuff <laughs> like that. Also, if you want to join us on one of these panels to talk about the mole, Big Brother, Amazing Race, Survivor, Drag Race, Drag You Love, Drag UK, Call Me Mother, everything that we got going on on this on the cup, we got everything. Every or even drag even if you have your own. A, another yet another show that we haven't talked to. Mm -hmm. I've been pushing for be solitary in the server lately. So I mean we never know. It <laughs> might happen. AJ, it might happen. So <laughs> if you have a show that you want to talk about that we don't talk about on the cup and you're like, hey, I can host it. I can talk to it. Hit us in our DMs. Hit up one of uh, myself or Jim Leader Logan or hit up Sam Demonte and we will all get back together with you and let you know if we can squeeze this in on our time. Our channel is open for all talk reality. So if you're able, if you got something you want to talk about, hit us up, let us know, and we'll get back with you. Um, we love seeing new faces on the cup. So Absolutely. we'll have that. And so with that being said, I think we're done. AJ, Anissa, it's been a pleasure. I had a great time. And uh, yeah, I love my cup, but cheers, y'all. Cheers. cheers. Oh, wait, hold on before we cheers because I have to. I'm not Logan. So I, of course, am not prepared to actually say goodbye yet because that's not what I do. But I'm going to do it now. <laughs> so let's cheers again, guys. Cheers. Yeah. Bye. Goodbye. 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 Bye. 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 Come back. Yes. Bye. Are you still here? Bye. Are you still here? Uh, the, the movie's are you over. Here? It's over.